Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the Story Master and I am back with a part 2 of What If Serena Traveled With Ash From The Start. But before we start, let's do a little summary first. Ash had faced many obstacles in his journey. Now let's see how this will change if Serena traveled with Ash and friends. So now join Ash, Serena, Misty and Brock in their journey through the Kanto region battling trainers, befriending Pokemon and learn through on their journey to become a Pokemon master. Disclaimer. Heracross0122 is the author of this series. I just made the audio adaptation of it and yeah I have the permission of the author. Remember to like, subscribe after this video and make sure to share it with your friends. Now let's begin. Pokemon Emergency. It was around 6.30 p.m., the sky was now orange, the sun bearably visible. Walking down the dirt road, Ash and Serena had been silent since spotting that mystical bird. It's not that they are on bad terms, but Pikachu is critically injured, and they just want to get him to the Pokemon Center, this is a Pokemon emergency. A few moments later, the two trainers could spot the outline of a city. As they continued their trek, the group made their way into the city. As they passed the city gate, they noticed it was bigger than expected. Of course they've visited here before, but in the past, it has always been by coach to avoid wild Pokemon, and they have only explored the retail side. This was more of a housing they saw a sign saying, Viridian's Pokemon Center. 20 minutes and an arrow pointing in the direction, they broke out into a run. Sure, they were tired, beaten, exhausted, but their Pokemon needed help. While pushing forward, they heard an announcement throughout the Ontier town. Citizens of Viridian City, please be on the lookout as we have reports of Pokemon thieves in the area. A female voice spoke through several intercoms. This didn't make either Ash or Serena feel better. After everything that happened, now they needed to be careful of Pokemon thieves, great. As they ran through several streets of houses and flats, they also spotted what looks like a peaceful park nearby. As they ran, they saw a police station ahead and there is female police officer stood outside. She has turquoise blue hair which falls mostly behind her head and is quite big at the bottom. Her hair is covered by a dark blue police hat, which had a red lining around the summit, a golden embalm in the center, and a black flap. A short sleeve dark blue top, the same shade as her hat, a name badge which reads, Office Jenny. It has red lining around the sleeves and collar. The center of the top is also more of a light blue color with two pockets. She has a black belt around her waist with a golden buckle. Her skirt is the same shade of dark blue, which stands halfway between her knees and her waist. Finally she has smart black shoes, suitable for running. She flagged the two new trainers down. Hold it! Officer Jenny shouted, causing both children stop in front of her. Where do you think you're going with that Pikachu? My Pikachu is seriously injured. Ash pleaded. We need to take him to the Pokemon Center. Right, and my Fennekin needs help too. Serena added. Officer Jenny studied these two kids for a moment before deciding they were being honest. After all, the reports say the Pokemon thieves are in their early 20s, and these kids are 10, so they don't match the suspects. All right, I believe you. Let's just see your ids and you can go. Officer Jenny replied, as she handed out her hand. Um, you mean our Pokédexes? Ash asked, a little uncertain, as both himself and Serena pulled out the red devices. Without a word, Officer Jenny took the two devices and opened both up. She pressed a few buttons and the Pokédexes confirmed Ash and Serena's story. 
Officer Jenny smiled as she handed the devices back. Okay, kids. Officer Jenny spoke as Ash and Serena each took back their Pokédexes. You're free to go. Thank you, Officer. Jenny. The two replied in unison as they read her name badge. Could you show us the way to the Pokemon Center, please? Ash requested. I can do better than that. Officer Jenny replied, with an inward smirk. I'll take you there myself. Before Ash or Serena could have responded, Officer Jenny ran into the police station, leaving the two 10-year-olds bewildered. About a minute later, Officer Jenny drove from behind the station in a motorbike, with a sidecar. This caused both Ash and Serena to sweat drop, that isn't the biggest sidecar, and the two of them would be very close. Hop in. Office Jenny instructed. Ash and Serena looked at each other. She was a police officer, so she can be trusted, and traveling by virtual is fast than walking, what's the worst that could happen? With that, the two kids climbed into the sidecar. Due to the small space, Serena was practically sat on Ash's knee, which caused her to blush immensely. Ash, however, didn't notice, he was too focused on Pikachu. With everyone strapped in, and the engine revved, Officer Jenny drove off at a dangerously fast speed. This caused the two kids to cry out and Serena latched onto Ash, for safety. Did this officer really have a driver's license? As they drove off into the city, Misty was right on their tail. She had found the remains of her bike, and as a result, was now on a war path. She was marching through the city, with the fried bike on her back, not bothering with the strange looks she's getting. As she closed in on the two ten years old, she saw them drive off at speed. It didn't take a genius to realize their first would be the Pokemon Center. With her targets set, Misty continued her march to avenge her bike. Those two kids will regret messing with me, Misty angrily thought. With Ash, Serena and Officer Jenny tearing up the road, and Misty to focus on hunting her prey, none of them noticed a hot air balloon in the shape of a Meowth. In the basket are three individuals. The first is a woman, Jessie. She has long snake-style dark red hair with curly tips, sapphire blue eyes, a white long-sleeved midriff with a large red R on it and a black short-sleeved midriff underneath, a white short skirt, black thigh-high boots, green, pearl-like earrings and a pair of long black gloves. The second one is a man, James. He has Shoulder-length lavender hair with a small single fringe at the center of his head, green eyes, a white long-sleeved shirt with a large red R on it and a black short-sleeved undershirt, with white trousers which meet up with black boots and matching black gloves. The third one, is a Pokemon, Meowth. He has pale cream fur, his ears are black lined with light brown inner color. This color also matched his feet and tail end, black fine pupils in his big eyes, a golden yellow charm in the center of his forehead, and six whiskers, two on each side of his head, and two going upwards, surrounding his charm. Ah! Uh, just look at this photo. They complete got my bad side. Jesse moaned in disgust. Tell me about it Jesse. James replied. Whoever chose this terrible picture, they will be sorry they ever looked at this face. We're all sorry to look at your face Jimmy. Meowth piped up, which is weird as it can actually speak human language. Now stick to the plan. Meowth grabbed a fishing rod and using patience and accuracy, he hooked the corner of the wanted photo and brought it up to the basket. Humph. James turned his head to the side. You're right, I suppose. Are you ready to steal some rare and valuable Pokemon? James asked in a sinister tone. I'm very ready. Jesse answered in an equally as evil tone. And don't forget me. I'm the top cat. Meowth. Meowth added. 
With that the hot air balloon flew off in the same direction, Officer Jenny drove towards a few minutes prior. As the motorbike closed in on the Pokemon Center, Ash and Serena thought it was all over. They were driving at a dangerously high speed which was only increasing as they got closer and closer to the door. The two ten-year-olds shut their eyes as they prepared for the impact. A-A-A-A-R-R-R-R-R. Both of them screamed in fear. Officer Jenny just laughed. Hold on, kids. She laughed as she sped up again. I know what I'm doing. Although that didn't ease the two ten-year-olds, they were going to crash. But, as they were an inch away from the doors, they automatically opened. Officer Jenny threw on the bikes and made a 90-degree turn. The bike flew into the Pokemon Center and the it screeched to a halt, completely stopping in front of the desk. C. Officer Jenny smiled. I told you I know what I'm doing. Oh my. The nurse behind the desk exclaimed in shock. This is Nurse Joy. She has bright pink hair and fair skin, a Mexican pink colored dress with a white nurse apron, and low heel Mary Jane shoes. What's going on? Nurse Joy. We have a Pokemon emergency. Officer Jenny announced as the two kids climbed out of the sidecar. Nurse Joy, can you please help my Pikachu? Ash pleaded as he showed the unconscious mouse in his arms. I understand. Nurse Joy replied as she went over to a microphone. Chance, we need a small stretcher. Stat. A couple seconds later, a pink egg-shaped Pokemon, Chansey, pushed a small stretcher up to Ash who carefully lay Pikachu down on the stretcher. Serena brought out her Pokédex to scan Nurse Joy's assistance. Chansey, the egg Pokémon. A rare and elusive Pokémon that is said to bring happiness to those who manage to get it. It shares its egg with any Pokémon that is injured. Serena's Pokédex spoke. Nurse Joy, could you take a look at my Fennekin too please? Serena asked worriedly, as she held the Pokeball towards Nurse Joy. I'd be happy too. Nurse Joy smiled before she took the Pokeball from Serena and walked into the back as Chansey pushed the stretcher in the same direction. Well, that's my job done. Officer Jenny spoke. See you kids around and stay out of trouble. With that, Ash and Serena said their thanks and Officer Jenny drove off leaving the two trainers alone in the Pokemon Center's lobby. With their Pokemon being examined and their clothes dirty from the events in Route 1, Ash and Serena went to the bathrooms in the lobby to clean up best they can. Since Nurse Joy is healing Pikachu and Fennekin, they can't get their rooms for the night. While cleaning themselves up, they changed into their bed wear. Ash had changed into a white short-sleeved t-shirt with a Pokeball in the center, and dark blue athletic shorts. While Serena changed into a plain light pink shirt and pink shorts. Once changed, they followed the signs around the center, they found a laundry room and set their clothes to wash. Then they returned to the lobby. In the lobby, Ash sat on the settee while Serena went over to a vending machine to get a drink. She brought two soda pops, one for her and one for Ash. As she stood up after collecting them from the dispenser, she noticed two posters on the wall. The first one is for the Pokemon Indigo League Challenge. Do you want to be the very best? Are you aiming for the top? Try the Indigo League Challenge. Battle and beat the eight gym leaders of the Kanto region in a battle against the best in the Indigo Plateau Stadium, for your chance to win the right to enter Kanto's Champions League. Registrar at the nearest Pokemon Center, for more information. Ash is probably going to sign up whilst we're here. Serena thought with a sad sigh. Why can't she find her own dream? Then she looked at the second poster. It was for the Pokemon Chateau Challenge. Do you like fashion? Do you like bottles? Combine the two with the new Battle Chateau Challenge.
Dress up and compete in a knockout tournament. Raise your rank up to the Grand Duke or Duchess. Facilities in Viridian, Cerulean, Celadon, Saffron, Fuchsia and Cinnabar. To compete enter at that city's chateau. Battle chateau. That could be interesting. Serena thought as she had an image of herself in a big fancy clothes, with Fennekin in her arms, and Ash by her side, being handed a big golden trophy, with the crowd cheering then Ash sweeps her off her feet, holding her in his arms, and he'll lean down, their lips mirroring so apart then. Hey Serena, Ash called out, snapping her out of her, Ash and to see. What you looking at? Oh Ash, Serena replied, trying to not show her embarrassment for having another, Ash and to see just looking at these posters cool the indigo league i best registrar while i'm here ash commented as he inspected the first poster yeah serena replied i also saw this one the battle chateau ash turned his attention to the second poster and spoke thoughtfully yeah i thought it would be good to check out serena enthusiastically replied she was getting pumped about maybe finding a dream. Hum. Ash hummed thoughtfully as he read it. I think it'd be great for you. You're really great with fashion and this sounds perfect for you. Serena blushed at Ash's words of praise. He he he. Thanks Ash. Serena almost whispered in a sweet tone. We should probably call home whilst we wait. I bet our mums would like to know we're here. Ash suggested not noticing Serena's previous tone. Serena nodded in agreement and they walked over to the video phones. In the process, Serena handed Ash one of the soda pops. Do you mind if I call my mum first? Serena asked. Not at all. Ash smiled as he gestured her towards the chair. Serena smiled. Ash could be so gentlemanlike. Serena took her seat and dialed her home number hitting the call button. It was about 30 seconds before someone picked up the other end. The screen lit up, and Grace appeared on the other side. Oh, hello Serena. Grace spoke cheerfully. Hi mom. Serena cheerfully replied. Me and Ash are traveling together and we've made it to Viridian City. Grace got a surprised look. Not that they've made it Viridian as Route 1 isn't that big but because she got to travel with Ash. Well, it's good to see you've arrived safe. Grace replied. I knew you could do it. Serena blushed. She knew her mother was referring to asking to travel with Ash, but the truth was, he asked her. Her daughter's reaction caused Grace to giggle, teasing Serena was too easy. She knew Serena could do it. What does she mean by that? Ash thought with confusion. Is Ash with you now? Grace asked. Yes, he is. Serena replied nervously. She didn't want to say anything her mother could tease her with. With the mention of his name, Ash pushed his previous thought to the back of his mind and made his way over to Serena's side. Evening Ms. Yvonne. Ash greeted. Grace sighed. Guess he never would stop with the formalities. Ash, it's good to see you. Grace smiled. I'm also happy Serena won't be out there on her own. Can you promise to look out for her? Sure. I won't let anything bad happen to her. Ash smiled. In the back of his mind, he remembered the promise he made Serena about sticking together, but that doesn't mean he can't be protective. Thank you Ash. Grace thanked with gratitude. After everything he has done for Serena since moving, she knew she could trust him. With that, the mother and daughter stayed making general chat. When Grace asked about their first day adventures, both 10-year-old Sweat dropped and explained the quiet stroll down Route 1, conveniently forgetting the part of almost dying and being chased by an army of Spiro. After a few minutes, an alarm went off in the Yvonne house, which prompted them to end the call. With that, 
Ash and Serena changed seats. Once comfy, Ash dialed his house number and hit the call button. Like before, it took around half a minute before the screen light up. The image was of Ash's living room, although Delia wasn't there. Evening, Ketchum residence. Delia spoke off screen. Hi mom. Ash replied. It's me. At the sound of Ash's voice, Delia rushed to the phone and sat down. Hello dear. Delia smiled as she greeted him. I see you're at Viridian City. It took your father four days to get there when he first started on his journey. Ash frowned. He didn't like his father. He isn't blind. He knows Drake doesn't like him, and his father is the key reason for that. Plus the man himself is hardly ever around. They're lucky if they see him once a year. Yeah mum. We're at Viridian's Pokemon Center. Ash mumbled. Delia sighed. It seems Ash still has issues with his father, if only he knew the reasons why. Now Ash. Delia smiled sweetly. How could you do something reckless? I don't know what yet, but I know you've done something dangerous. Delia explained. Ash laughed nervously as he scratched the back of his head, with a sweat dropped. Ya see mum. I tried to catch a Pidgey. It ended up angering a nearby Spiro, who called in some friends, and chased us all the way to Viridian. Ash nervously replied, conveniently missing the part of jumping into the river, and almost being fried alive by a thunderbolt. Ash. Delia sighed. She knew how Ash could be. Sorry mum. Ash mumbled. But it was all a complete accident. Okay dear. Delia admitted defeat. She knew she could yell at Ash until she was blue in the face and it would have no effect. Just promise me you'll stay safe no matter what comes up. Ash smiled and nodded. He knew his mother would worry. Sure mum. I promise. Ash replied. Now that you're in Viridian, why don't you visit Aunt Yellow? Delia suggested. I'm sure she'll be happy to you again. Ash smiled. He has seen his aunt in a few months, she doesn't really go out much and was always attached to himself and Drake. Ash wondered if something happened before. Sure mum. I'd love to see her again. Ash agreed with a smile. I'll go tomorrow. After a little general chat, the Pokemon Center's chime went off and Nurse Joy appeared, back to her desk. With that, Ash said goodbye and hung up he could finally find out how Pikachu is. Ash and Serena made their way over to the desk where Nurse Joy was waited. Nurse Joy. Ash shouted as he made his way over, clearly excited. How's my Pikachu? Startled at first, she soon relaxed with a warm smile. It was heartwarming to see a trainer care for their Pokemon so much. Your Pikachu will be just fine. Nurse Joy reassured. He exhausted his electric supply, which caused him to collapse. He's currently in the recovery room, being recharged. Ash sighed in relief. He was happy Pikachu was safe. Can I see him? Ash asked. Of course. Nurse Joy replied. Chansey is currently setting up the recharger. When she's done, I'll have her show you through. Nurse Joy. What about my Fennekin? Serena asked, appearing from behind Ash. Your Fennekin is just fine. Nurse Joy smiled as she handed over the Pokeball. Here you go. Serena smiled and thanked Nurse Joy as she accepted her Pokeball back. She quickly let Fennekin out, who jumped into her trainer's arms with a happy bark, completely unaware of what transpired while resting in her Pokeball. It wasn't long before Chansey appeared and escorted the two trainers to the room, which Pikachu was recharging in. Chansey lead the two trainers into the recovery bay. When they arrived, Pikachu was lying on a bed, still unconscious, with cables taped up to his cheeks and a sort of computer screen, to the side, showing the mouse Pokemon's vital signs. Ash saw this and water formed in his eyes, 
He hadn't even been a trainer for a day. If he wasn't so naive and tried to catch that Pidgey by himself, then he wouldn't have angered that Spiro, and they wouldn't have been chased, and Pikachu wouldn't have got hurt protecting him. Slowly and quietly, Ash walked over to the bedside. He stood over his injured started with a depressed look on his face. I I'm sorry, Pikachu. Ash quietly mumbled. Suddenly, Ash felt a hand rubbing his back in a comforting manner. It was Serena. Don't worry Ash. Nurse Joy said Pikachu will be just fine. Serena reassured with a friendly smile. You went above and beyond to keep me and Pikachu safe. And I'm sure Pikachu is thankful for that. Thanks, Serena. Ash thanked with gratitude. He didn't know why, but she could change his mood around in an instant. The two sat in silence, in the armchairs in the room. It wasn't awkward by any means, it was just neither really had anything to say, and were just waiting for Pikachu to wake up. After about 10 minutes, Ash's stomach growled. Although, Unlike before Ash didn't respond, he was solely focused on Pikachu. Hey Ash, don't you want some food? Serena asked. No, I'm just gonna wait here for Pikachu to wake up. Ash replied, although it was without thought and his eyes never left his starter Pokemon, no matter what Nurse Joy said, Ash would worry until Pikachu wakes up. I'm going to get something. Serena told Ash, she hated seeing him like this. I'll bring you something back. Ash didn't reply, he was too focused on his partner. Serena sighed, she couldn't stand seeing him like this, he didn't even bother about food. What did he do with the really Ash? With that, Serena took off. From the recovery room, Serena went through the lobby and to the cafeteria. It was late and the hot food had stopped being served. Serena grabbed herself a salad box and Ash a sandwich. She made her way back towards the recovery bay, but was stopped when going through the lobby. I've finally found you. A female voice angrily blurted out. Serena turned around to see Misty marching towards her with some sort of reeked remains on her back. When she was in front of Serena, Misty dropped the remains down beside them. What happened to your bike? Serena asked, nonchalantly. What happened? Misty yelled. You and your boyfriend happened. Serena blushed. Did she just call Ash her boyfriend? If only. You stole it and apparently ruined it in the process. Misty explained, clearly angry. You have to buy me a new bike. Right now. Serena was liking this girl less and less. First, she slapped Ash and accused him of hurting Pikachu, then she just called Ash her boyfriend. What if Ash heard that? Plus, does she have to yell so much? Hold on. Serena yelled back. We were being chased by a flock of angry Spiro, and Pikachu needed urgent medical attention. Our only concern was our Pokemon. Serena retorted, she didn't have the heart to correct her about the boyfriend thing. Well still, I'm not letting you out of my sight until you've paid for my bike. Misty retorted, you are G, my bike my bike. Are you some sort of mental materialist or something? Serena angrily asked, what's that supposed to mean? Misty angrily asked, it means you're a spoiled brat. Pikachu is lying in the recovery room, unconscious and all you're bothered about is some stupid bike. Serena replied. Misty froze, sure she cared about being repaid for the bike, but she would never put something like that over the priority of a Pokemon's well-being, maybe she is a little hot-headed. Misty was about to reply when. BB boom. An explosion went off in the lobby and black smoke blinded the two girls. In Pikachu's room, the mouse Pokemon has since woken up. It turned out, sacrificing himself to the Spiros to protect the little Mon and Serena, was the final nail in the coffin.
Pikachu could now trust Ash. The two boys were just chatting. Turns out they have a lot in common. As they were talking, their attention was drawn by a loud BB boom. Coming from the lobby, Ash jumped up and moved towards the door to go and investigate, although was stopped when Pikachu jumped on his shoulder. No Pikachu, you haven't fully recharged yet. Ash warned. If you're going, I'm going. Pikachu retorted. But you're still injured, Pikachu. Ash pleaded. It's merely a scratch. Pikachu joked. Ash sighed, as he learned from their chat, Pikachu is much like Ash himself. You're not going to just wait here, are you? Ash asked, in a defeated tone. Not a chance. Pikachu replied proudly. Fine. Ash sighed. As long as you promise not to exhaust yourself. Scout's honor. Pikachu smugly raised his paw. Why was Ash skeptical about Pikachu keeping that promise? With that Ash ran down the hall towards the lobby, with Pikachu on his shoulder. In the lobby, Ash and Pikachu busted through the doors to see a star-shaped Pokemon spinning around, creating a gust of wind, blowing the black smoke away. Ash pulled out his Pokédex. Staryu, the star-shaped Pokémon. An enigmatic Pokémon that can effortlessly regenerate any appendage it loses in battle. The core of this Pokémon is valued as some type of jewelry. Ash saw it was that orange-haired girl from earlier, who was battling with Staryu. Leave it to a girl, to worry about her jewelry. After that thought, Ash noticed the smoke was gone, there were two adults and three Pokemon all stood in the entrance. Okay Staryu, that's enough. You can stop rapid spin. Misty instructed, and the water type stopped spinning and returned to Misty's side. That was when the group started to speak. Prepare for trouble. Jesse spoke. Make it double. James spoke. To protect the world from devastation. Jesse added. To unite all people within our nation. James added. To denounce the evils from truth and love. Jesse striked a dramatic pose. To extend our reach to the stars above. James striked a dramatic pose. Jesse. James. Team Rocket blasts off at the speed of light. Jesse made one final pose. Surrender now, or prepare to fight. James made one final pose. Meowth. That's right. Meowth chimed in at the end. Ash, Serena, Pikachu, Fennekin, Misty, Staryu and Nurse Joy all sweat dropped, although all but Ash was amazed at a talking Pokemon. To him all Pokemon are like that. Ash was the first to recover. Hey Serena, I didn't know the circus is in town. Ash enthusiastically smiled. We should go. Team Rocket fell over anime style. Little twerp. Jesse spat in disgust. We are the Might Team Rocket and we're here to steal all your rare and valuable Pokemon. James smirked evil. Meowth. That's right. Jimmy boy. Meowth added. Well you're out of luck, this is a place for injured Pokemon, so just leave. Nurse Joy shouted, although she was terrified. We'll be the judge of that. Jesse smirked evilly. I've never seen a Vulpix like that before, we'll start with that one. Jesse pointed towards Fennekin who was currently hiding behind Serena's legs. Serena had been frozen in fear since they arrived. There's no way we'll let you take any of these Pokemon. Ash shouted. Not Fennekin. Not Pikachu. None of them. Serena felt a rush of affection that Ash is standing up for her. Sure they made that promise, but she still likes him being protective, just not to the point where he'll risk his life. That's not your choice. James evilly smirked. Coughing. Go. Ekans, join in. Jesse added. The two poison types flew out in front of the two thieves. Both Ash and Serena brought out their Pokédexes. Coughing. The poison gas Pokémon. 
Because it stores several kinds of toxic gases in its body, it is prone to exploding without warning. The gases in this Pokemon cause it to float in the air. Ash's Pokédex spoke. Ekans, the snake Pokemon, moves silently and stealthily, eats the eggs of birds, such as Pidgey and Spiro. It can release the toxins in its body as a defense mechanism. Serena's Pokédex spoke. Serena, you wanna battle these guys? Ash asked. Serena blushed lightly, her first battle, and partnered with Ash, she must be dreaming. Sure. Serena replied as she swapped her blush with a glare of determination. Fennekin, I choose you. Fennekin barked with determination as she leapt out in front of the two poison types. Despite being intimidated, she didn't show it. All right, Pikachu. You up to battle? Ash asked as he turned to his yellow partner. Just try to stop me. Pikachu replied with determination as he sparked his cheeks. All right, Pikachu. I choose you. Ash pointed to the battlefield and Pikachu jumped from Ash's shoulder and landed next to Fennekin. Ash and Serena vs. Jesse and James. Ekans bring me that little fox, bite attack. Jesse smirked. Ekans lunged at the fire fox with its mouth wide open. Dodge it Fennekin. Serena shouted. Fennekin jumped to the left, avoiding the snake Pokemon's attack. Tackle that runt, coughing. James butted in. As Fennekin flew through, the poison gas Pokemon flew at a fast speed, knocking Fennekin back to the ground. Hey, that was a dirty trick. Serena cried. We're here for your Pokemon girly. Jesse spoke with a snide voice. We didn't come here to play by the rules. All right coughing. Blind it with sludge attack. James commanded. Coughing opened its mouth and launched a blob of toxic sludge at Fennekin, but she was backed in a corner. Staryu. Dissolve it with water gun. Misty shouted. Staryu jumped into action and squirted a jet of water out of its top point. The jet of water collided with the sludge blob before it hit Fennekin and dissolved it into thin air. Hey, three against two isn't fair. James cried. I thought you didn't play by the rules. Misty mocked, and Jesse saw red. Thanks, Misty. Serena thanked with a genuine smile. No problem. Misty replied, returning the smile. You 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 are r r g g g g. Jesse grunted in frustration. Ekans wrapped that stupid star. Ekans lunged forward while the two girls were chatting and wrapped its body around Staryu. Now, bite it. Jesse smirked. While wrapped around Staryu, Ekans bite Staryu. Fennekin helped Staryu out. Use scratch. Serena shouted. Fennekin extended her sharpened claws and flew at Ekans. Tackle it. Coughing. James smirked. Pikachu, quick attack coughing. Ash shouted. Pikachu shot of like a bullet, and hit coughing into a wall. Fennekin continued and scratched Ekans across the face. The two poison types were lying on top of each other. Staryu, return those two, with rapid spin. Misty smirked. Staryu jumped and started spinning at a fast rate. It collided with the two poison types and they were sent flying back at Jesse, James and Meowth. Pikachu, Fennekin, and Staryu all jumped in front of the evil team as they attempted to get up. Pikachu, Fennekin, Staryu, Thunder Shock, Ember, Water Gun. The trio spoke at once, respectively. The three Pokemon launched their individual attacks at the grouped target. Despite the water, the combination of Pikachu's electricity, Fennekin's fire and Coughing's gas, caused a mini explosion, which in turn sent the two humans and three Pokemon flying, creating a hole in the roof. Team Rockets blasting off. The group shouted as they disappeared into the sky. The group of trainers and Pokemon all turned towards each other. They just stared for a moment when...
We won. Ash and Serena cheered in unison as Pikachu and Fennekin leapt into their trainer's arms, respectively, equally as happy with their victory as their trainers. Staryu returned to Misty's side, it is a tough Pokemon, brave-natured and doesn't need affection after every win. Good job Staryu, you're the best. Misty praised as she bent down to her starter, with a friendly smile. Now return. Staryu, did enjoy some praise though, and happily was returned. After returning her starter, Misty stood up and smiled at the celebrating trainers and Pokemon. Oh, thank you all so much. If it wasn't for you three, then those thieves could have taken any of the Pokemon here. Nurse Joy thanked. It was at this time, that they noticed the damage done. First, the automatic door were blown open, with windows smashed and the shattered glass over the floor, chairs and settees were turned over and damaged, while the whole area covered in soot, and the floor was covered in cracks and damage. Hee hee hee, sorry about the damage Nurse Joy. Ash apologized after a nervous laugh. Don't worry about it. Nurse Joy reassured as she waved her hand to show no harm's done. All Pokemon centers are covered by league funding, so they will cover the damage. Thank you Misty. Serena walked up to the orange-haired girl. For protecting Fennekin, Serena offered her hand to Misty. Misty stared at the open gesture. Why was this girl doing this? Sure, she saved Fennekin, but they also saved Staryu and they seemed to work well together. Sure, they owed her a bike, but they actually made a good team. You're welcome, Serena. Misty replied as she accepted the handshake. And, thank you, for saving Staryu. I've got to say Misty. When we first met, I thought you were some, spoiled brat with anger issues. Serena was honest, which caused Misty to frown. But after speaking and battling with you, I've realized I was wrong. You're pretty okay, and you clearly love your Pokemon. Misty smiled. Sure, the first part may have been uncalled for, but she can accept it. I feel the same. When I pulled you out of the river, I thought you were some irresponsible kids who hurt that Pikachu. Misty was honest, which caused Serena to frown this time. But those two clearly share a strong bond, and the same goes for you and your Fennekin, you're pretty okay after all. Thanks Misty. Serena thanked with gratitude. Why don't we start anew? Sure. Misty replied with a friendly smile. It's good to see you're both getting on. Ash spoke as he walked over, holding a room key. Ash and Serena agreed ahead of time to share a room. After all they've done it before at sleepovers, and it's not like they're sharing a bed or anything. Plus it saves on funds, although that doesn't apply this time, considering Nurse Joy offered the room, free of charge, since they fought of those thieves. Yeah, the two girls replied in unison. But you two still owe me a bike. Misty added, although not angry like before. Serena sighed. She hoped they could just forget that part. Ash and Pikachu sweat dropped. They weren't present at the last meeting before Team Rocket showed up. He he he. Don't worry Misty. We just don't have the funds right now, but we promise to pay you back as soon as we have the money. Serena reassured. She didn't want an argument. Okay. I'll just stick with you until then. Misty suggested with a smile. Both Ash and Serena exchanged glances. Sure, they didn't get off on the wrong foot, but now it was all behind them. Although Misty proved she could be nice, and was an experienced trainer. More experienced than these two at least, and that could help out at the very least. Okay Misty. Serena started as she looked back at the orange-haired girl. You can travel with us. The more the mayor after all. Ash added with a smile. A young girl's dream. It is the day after Team Rocket attacked the Pokemon Center. Like planned, 
The group spent the night at the Pokemon Center, because the room had three beds, Ash and Serena invited Misty to join them. Although a little uncomfortable at first, with sleeping in the same room as Ash, she gladly agreed. Misty changed into her bed where in the adjacent bathroom, for privacy. Once in bed, the trio spent the night getting to know each other and planning out the next day's adventures. As Ash promised, he planned to visit his Aunt Yellow in the morning, and while he did that, Misty decided to join Serena in her trip to the Battle Chateau. They both knew this should take them through to noon, and as a result, they could head out for their next destination of Viridian Forest, as it is the most direct route to Pewter City and Ash's first gym battle. Of course there is a gym in Viridian City, but they only accept challenges from trainers with seven badges, and it's the only leader whose identity is kept secret, anytime they are referred to, they are called. G. The trio also introduced their Pokemon, needless to say, Misty was shocked by Ash's ability to understand Pokemon, Misty actually had two Pokemon her, one being the Staryu which battled Team Rocket, and the other was a little fish which both Ash and Serena scanned their Pokédexes. Goldeen, the goldfish Pokemon. Its tail fin billows like an elegant ballroom dress, giving it the nickname of the Water Queen. We now join them in the lobby, parting ways, for now. So we'll meet up back here, at 11.40 and grab an early lunch before setting off. Serena clarified. Right. Ash smiled with a thumbs up. And best of luck with the battle chateau. Serena blushed at Ash's comment. He he he, thank you Ash. Serena replied in a sweet low tone, barely audible. Seriously, how can he be this dense? Pikachu thought with a mental sigh. Sure. Ash was probably the nicest human he's meet, but he is also the dense's. All well, at least it will make for some good comedy, for the electric mouse Pokemon. Hmm, this could be interesting. Misty thought with a mischievous smile. Sure, they were friends and she highly doubted she would ever be interested in Ash. At least not in that way, but maybe some playful teasing couldn't hurt, it could be a way of bonding and maybe she'll help the younger girl out, but that would have to wait for a later day. Pikachu. Ready to go. Ash turned to his partner who was sat on his shoulder, seeing nothing odd about Serena's reaction. Ready as I'll ever be. Pikachu replied. Okay. See you guys later. Ash said as he started walking away. Serena just stared at the raven-haired boy until he turned a corner and was out of sight. H-H-H-H-R-R-R-R. Serena happily sighed before turning to Misty. How about you Misty? Ready to go? Serena asked, receiving a smile and nod from the orange-haired girl, the two of them headed off in an opposite direction to Ash and Pikachu. After a couple of minutes of walking in silence, it wasn't an uncomfortable silence, the two girls were taking in the sights of the city, making sure to go on the right path. Misty decided to break the silence. So Serena, Misty started casually. How did you and Ash meet, anyway? Serena sighed happily as she remembered the faithful day. It all started four years ago. From there Serena described their fist encounter at Professor Oak's Pokemon summer camp, albeit, in a more, romantic, tone. Then after the camp, he kept his promise and we became best friends. Serena smiled. By this point, her head was staring at the sky with her eyes closed reliving the day, like a movie playing in her head. Misty smiled, which almost looked a little mischievous, she was sure Serena held feelings for the raven-haired boy. Sue. Misty drew out. I guess that means you're a couple right. Serena came to a complete halt, her eyes shot open as she stared at the orange-haired girl, with her face turning bright red. WW what a are you, t-talking a about? Serena nervously stuttered. 
Misty smirked. She knew she was on the right path. We're just friends. With Serena sighing sadly, at the end of the part, Misty knew the least she could do is help. But you like him? Misty asked, in a kind tone. Right. Yeah. Serena sighed sadly. So why don't you tell him? Misty asked. I'm assuming he doesn't know. This caused Serena to sigh sadly once more. It's simple really. Serena stated, matter of fact like. Ash it the nicest, kindest, sweetest person I've ever met. And I'd hate to ruin our friendship by revealing my feelings. Misty smiled. It is clearly more than just some silly little schoolgirl crush. Don't worry Serena. Misty reassured as she put a hand on her shoulder. I'm sure Ash has feelings for you. He just doesn't know it yet. Serena smiled. Maybe Misty is right. Thanks Misty. Serena thanked. But I'm still not ready to tell him. Misty smiled and nodded, and the two girls closed in on the battle chateau. Ash was stood in front of a small cottage in a deserted part of town. It was so far north of the city, it was arguably Route 2. Ash didn't know why, but his Aunt Yellow always seemed isolated. She never seemed to be very happy, although whenever Ash or Drake would visit, she was always nice, and treated them like her own children. After exhaling a big breath, Ash hit the knocker on the door, and knocked three times, he then let go, and took a step back. After about a minute, the door slowly opened. Stood in the doorway, was a woman, a few years older than Delia. She has long pale yellow hair which hasn't been stylized, her hair is covered by a straw hat and other than two feathers sticking out, one red, one blue, it is fairly plain. Her eyes are bright white and brown like Delia's, although, unlike her sisters, they seem to hold pain rather than happiness. She is wearing a light yellow dress, with a sort of black coat underneath which conceals most of her body. Finally, she has some light pale purple boots which meets with her black undercoat. As she stood in the doorway, she arms are wrapped around her, it almost looked like she was shaking until her eyes fell upon her nephew. It had been a few months since she's last seen him, and she smiled lightly at him. Quote dot dot dot, Ash, Yellow spoke, in almost a whisper. Yeah Aunt Yellow, Ash smiled, it's me, and this is my partner, Pikachu. Yellow's soft glaze fell upon the little yellow mouse Pokemon, suddenly her eyes became watery, as she remembered her old friend. Why did she have to meet that man? Before Ash could see her cry, Yellow grabbed Ash and pulled him into a tight hug, subtly drying her eyes while in the tight embrace. Ash happily returned the embrace. Pikachu looked at this woman with interest, he could tell she was a good person like Ash, but he couldn't help but think maybe she's hiding something, even from Ash. He doesn't know why, but he can sense a great deal of distress and pain from her. It's good to meet you too, Pikachu. Yellow flashed a warm smile. Hiya. Pikachu happily waved from the ground. As Ash was pulled into the hug, the electric mouse jumped onto the floor. Yes. He is more accepting since Ash opened his eyes, although he is still not a fan on tight enclosed spaces, even with a hug. After a couple minutes, Yellow let go of her nephew and stood up. Come on in Ash. You must be cold. Ash smiled and happily walked into the small cottage, with Pikachu shortly behind him. Serena and Misty arrived in front of a big, castle-like, building with a big gate and a smartly dressed man, stood there. He had neatly combed white hair, a point-thin mustache, a smart dark blue blazer which covers his pure white shirt and black bow tie, he also has smart dark blue trousers in the same color as his blazer and smart black shoes. Welcome to the battle chateau, dames. The man spoke. I am Hennessy, pleased to make your acquaintance. 
Serena was a little nervous, for some reason she was intimidated by this man. Um, hello Hennessy. Serena nervously replied. I'm Serena and this is Misty. Hennessy raised an eyebrow. This is clearly her first time at the battle chateau. Is this perhaps, your first visit to a battle chateau facility? Hennessy asked. Yes, it is. Serena swiftly replied. Very well. Hennessy replied. All I need is your recommendation. From the person of stature, I will gladly show you through. A recommendation? Serena asked as she tilted her head in confusion. I don't think I have one. If you have a number, I could call. Hennessy explained. Then that would work, as well. Oh I know. Serena lit up. I'm sure Professor Oak would give me a recommendation. Oh, you know Professor Oak? Hennessy asked. Yes. Serena smiled. He gave me my Pokédex, and as a neighbor. Perfect. Hennessy exclaimed. Your Pokédex will be proof enough that Professor Oak deems you a worthy trainer. Okay. Great. Serena smiled as she pulled her Pokédex out. Hennessy gladly accepted the device and pressed a few buttons, which confirmed Serena's identity and the fact Professor Oak gave it to her. There you go. Hennessy handed the Pokédex back to Serena. Are you competing too, young dame? Me, Misty replied, like it was a question. No, no, I'm just spectating today. Very good, Hennessy replied. Would you follow me? With that, Hennessy turned around and started walking into the castle-like structure behind him. Serena and Misty followed behind, although they kept their distance. Once in the building, Hennessy walked over to the desk to the right, where a smarty-dressed woman was stood, next to a computer. Madam, I have one Serena Yvonne here, who will be competing for her first time. Hennessy explained and gestured towards the nervous honey blonde girl. The women smiled at and pulled a clipboard with a sheet of paper on it. Very good, Hennessy. The women smiled, before turning to Serena. Young dame. The women turned towards Serena. If you'd be so kind, could you please fill this in? The women requested as she passed the clipboard and pen over. Of course. Serena returned the smile and gladly accepted the items. She spent a few minutes, filling in the piece of paper, just basic information, and then handed it back to the women. Thank you, madam. The women thanked, followed by skimming the information Serena just filled in, before typing down somethings on the computer, at incredible speeds. About a minute later, the women hit enter button and a new card was exported from the computer. Here you go, Baroness Serena. The women spoke softly, as she held the card out. You need to keep this card, as it is your personal entry pass and also tracks your rank. Serena tilted her head in confusion. Rank? Serena questioned. Ah yes. You see, at the Battle Chateau you don't receive gym badges, or frontier symbols or anything like that. The women smiled. Here, once you've won a tournament consisting of four battles, you raise your rank. There are five altogether. Baron, Baroness, Viscounts, Viscountesses, Earls, Countess, Marquises, Marchioness, Duke, Duchesses. Once you've worked your way up to a Duke or Duchess, you'll have the right to challenge the Battle Chateau head for the title of Grand Duke or Grand Duchess. Serena smiled. Imagine if she could become a Grand Duchess, it would be so amazing. Now, Baroness Serena, follow me. Please. Hennessy spoke, before walking up to, two women, dressed as maids. Would one of you madams please show our new Baroness towards the changing rooms? Hennessy requested. Certainly. One of the maids bowed before walking down the left corridor, and Serena followed shortly behind. In Yellow's house, Ash was sat on the settee, with his aunt Yellow sat opposite. 
Pikachu was a little on edge. This yellow person keeps looking at him like he's someone else. Plus, the house is quite plain. No pictures, a single window with the covers down, no color on the walls, only the brown wood which it is built up off. Something about this place just creeps the little mouse out. So Ash. Yellow spoke. Changing the conversation, they were previously discussing his first day as a trainer, although she seemed to cut off at the mention of Team Rocket. How's your brother, Drake, doing? Ash felt a little weird by her reaction to Team Rocket, although his aunt could always be like that. Drake. Ash replied, trailing off. He didn't want to mention the bad tension between the two, as he doesn't want to upset his auntie. He's doing fine. He actually started with a Charmander, like Dad did. Although Ash doesn't care for his father, he knows Yellow, for whatever reason has always supported him, talking like he a savior or something. Yellow smiled. She can't stand conflict, she's too much to deal with it. Although she isn't blind, she knows the bad tension Ash has with his brother and his strong distaste toward his father. If only he knew the history behind it all, then he would finally understand. Well, all in due time. And what about you? Yellow asked. Where do you plan on traveling to next? Well, me and Pikachu are aiming for the Indigo League, we're heading back to Viridian's Pokemon Center to meet up with Serena and Misty. Then it's off to Pewter City in our first gym battle. Ash replied enthusiastically finishing by throwing his fist in the air. Pikachu mimicked the action. Yellow giggled. She loved his enthusiasm. It was just like she was. Before she met him. Then she noticed something. Serena and Misty. Who are they? Yellow asked with interest. Well Serena is a friend from Pallet Town. The one I met at Professor Oak summer camp. Remember. I told you about her before. She didn't want to travel alone, so we decided to travel together. Ash explained. And Misty. She is the girl whose bike we borrowed to escape the Spiro. She caught up with us, and because we can't repay for her bike right now, she's decided to travel with us, as well. Oh yes. Serena was that girl who injured her knee. Yellow cheerfully replied. She has always been a romantic, and from what she knows about their meeting, it sounds like one from the romantic novel, with Ash being a knight in shining armor. If only she was lucky with her endeavors with love. So, is she just, a friend? Yellow grew a mischievous smile. What are you talking about? Ash asked, clearly confused. Pikachu face palmed. Ash is so dense. Back at the battle chateau, when she entered the changing rooms, Serena's eyes light up with all the clothes available, she was in fashion heaven. She quickly started rushing around trying to fix the perfect outfit. After 20 minutes, she got to work on her hair. In total she spent around 35 minutes in the changing rooms. Her new outfit looks like a long pink dress with short sleeves edged with white frills, pantyhose on her legs with elegant pink flats to match, and on her head is a sparkling pink headband. As she walked out to the main lobby she found Misty waiting for her. As Misty spotted the honey blonde girl, her eyes widened, and she walked towards her. Wow Serena, Misty spoke. You look beautiful in that dress. Serena smiled. Thank you, Misty. Serena replied. I bet Ash would think so, too. Misty whispered. This caused Serena to blush and let out a short yelp. Misty giggled in response. Come on Serena. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Misty reassured. Maybe. Serena sighed as her blush faded. It's just everyone in Pallet seemed to tease me about my crush. Even my mum. And, Serena, don't worry, it was just a bit of fun, Misty reassured. 
Besides, if Ash is as dense as you say he is, then you don't need to worry about someone else taking him away. Guess you're right, Misty. Serena replied with a grateful smile. Anyway, are you sure you want to participate today? Misty asked. Yeah, it looks like it will be good fun. Serena cheerfully replied. Misty inwardly sighed. This won't end well. Guess she should wait until it's all over. Baroness Serena Yvonne, please make your way to battle room 3. A voice announced over the speaker. With that, Serena turned around and started walking towards the battle room. This is a first round match of an official battle chateau tournament between Baroness Serena and Baroness Macy. May both participants curtsy. The ref declared. He was stood on the podium box in the center of the edge of the battlefield, with Serena and her opponent in the trainer boxes. Both Serena and Macy did a curtsy to each other. Now both participant may choose their Pokemon. Serena and Macy each grabbed their Pokeball and held it. Beedrill. Battle time. Macy threw her Pokeball, releasing the Poison Bee Pokemon. The bug type jabbed its stingers in an aggressive manure as a sign that he was ready for battle. Serena took a deep breath, and exhaled. Serena took out her Pokedex. Beedrill, the Poison Bee Pokemon. It has three poisonous stingers on its forelegs and its tail. They are used to jab its enemy repeatedly. Fennekin, I choose you. Serena threw her Pokeball and the fox Pokemon appeared on the battlefield. Although she was a little scared by the big bee, she stood her ground and took a battle position. Quote dot dot dot. Begin. The ref declared. Baroness Serena vs Baroness Macy. All right Fennekin. Start of with Ember. Serena instructed. Fennekin tensed up before opening her mouth and firing several little fireballs at Beedrill. Aerial ace to dodge, Macy shouted. Beedrill took off at speed, easily dodging the fireballs. While in the air, Beedrill preformed a looped and redirected towards Fennekin, before either Serena or Fennekin could react, Beedrill slammed his wings into the fire fox and Fennekin was sent flying into the wall. Fennekin had swirls in her eyes. Fennekin is unable to battle. The winner is Baroness Macy. The ref declared. Macy returned Beedrill, giving one last curtsy before exiting the room. Serena made her way over to Fennekin and picked her up, cradling the little fox Pokemon in her arms. Serena just stared at the unconscious fire type. What went wrong? She had a type advantage they were both the same rank, why did she loss? Serena's thought was cut off when Fennekin let out a weak bark of pain. She can't think about that now, Fennekin needs medical attention. With that, Serena took off, returning Fennekin. She quickly got changed back into her normal clothes, and then ran back to the Pokemon Center. Misty sighed, guess this is her cue and the orange-haired girl slowly followed Serena back to the Pokemon Center. At the Pokemon Center, Serena ran into the medical building and handed Fennekin over to Nurse Joy, who left to perform the checkup. Once Nurse Joy was gone, Serena sat down in a booth and just stared out the window, analyzing what happened in that battle. After all, it was her first official battle, and she lost badly she only snapped out of her thought when she heard a voice serena misty spoke as she stood in front of her the tone wasn't sympathetic or anything if anything it sounded stern oh hey misty serena replied sadly you're pretty naive ya yeah, know misty replied with a stern voice what do you mean serena asked what i mean is this is your second day as a trainer, and have probably haven't done any training with your Fennekin. Misty replied. Well, Serena went to reply, although she couldn't deny it. Misty sighed. 
Every battle facility, whether the battle chateau, a league gym or even a battle frontier, is not meant to be taken lightly. Misty explained. Serena didn't reply, so Misty saw it fit to continue. I bet every trainer in the battle chateau today was an experienced trainer who has been preparing for this tournament weeks, months, and have gotten to know their Pokemon. Misty continued. Macy knew her Beedrill could take to the air to dodge the attack, and used it. When your attack missed, you froze and Fennekin was left wide open. Serena sighed. I went with you today, as I thought you'd see some bottles from experienced trainers and be inspired to follow their lead. Misty continued. Not try to battle them yourselves. So, what should I do? Serena asked, as she looked towards the ground, in a whisper, which was almost inaudible. First, you need to apologize. Misty replied, and Serena nodded. Then you should spend time, whilst out on the road. Catch some more Pokemon, and spend time with them, training, bonding and then you can try at another battle chateau. Except this time, you'd be prepared. Serena was silent for about a minute. Thanks Misty. You're right. Serena replied with a strong-ish smile, and a flame in her eye. With that, Misty sat down, waiting for Fennekin to be healed. Back at Yellow's house, Ash was getting ready to leave. Okay Aunt Yellow. We best be going, Ash told her. Yellow got up, and gave him a massive hug. Goodbye Ash, Yellow spoke, with a cracking voice. Take care on the road. I will Aunt Yellow, Ash replied. It was good to see you again. It was good to see you too, Yellow replied as she let go of him. And before you go, yes, Ash turned to face his aunt as he stood in the doorway with Pikachu on his shoulder. Don't take this journey lightly. Around every corner there will be a new trial, ready to test you, test your Pokemon and test your friends. You can't just stroll through. Promise me, every challenge, where whilst out on the road, in one of your battles or anything else, you'll take it seriously. Yellow spoke, in a serious tone. Ash was taken back by this. Of course he would take it seriously. Well, maybe he could have handled the situation with the Spiros better, and with Misty and her bike. Plus tackling Pokemon thieves head-on wasn't the smartest of ideas. He does only have Pikachu, and Professor Oak did give him some Pokeballs to add more Pokemon to his team. Rather than aiming to get to Pewter City and his gym battle as soon as isn't the best idea, maybe they should spend some time in Viridian Forest, catch some more Pokemon, and get some serious training in. If his first day taught him anything, then it's anything can happen, he needs to be prepared for it. What if they run into that Team Rocket again? I promise. Ash answered truthfully. Ant Yellow. With that, Ash set off, back towards the Pokemon Center where he and Pikachu will reunite with Serena and Misty, before setting off towards Viridian Forest, where their journey, will continue. Viridian Forest. After the group met up at the Pokemon Center and Fennekin was healed and returned to Serena, Serena apologized to her starter and Misty explained what happened at the Battle Chateau to Ash. It turns out, Despite their different experience, they came to the same conclusion, they needed to start taking their journey seriously. Which means, training, bonding, and catching Pokemon. Once everyone was set, lunch was ate, the group set off for their next destination. Viridian Forest. It was a short 30-minute walk from the north of Viridian City to the forest entrance. Ash, Pikachu, Serena and Misty all stood in the building which allows access to the forest. Well, here we are, Viridian Forest. Ash announced, he was excited about what Pokemon he can add to his team. The girls, on the other hand, weren't that excited. 
Um, are you sure we need to go in there? Misty asked. Yeah, we need to add Pokemon to our teams and we need to start training properly. Ash replied, isn't that what you told Serena to do anyway? Well, yeah, but, Misty moaned, see, and I bet there's some great bug Pokemon to catch in there. Ash cheered. BB bugs. Misty nervously exclaimed. You aren't scared of a little forest, are you? Misty. Ash teased. And no, it's not the forest itself, but. Misty stuttered. Well Misty, if you don't want to go in the forest then I guess this is where we part ways. Ash smirked. Sure, they were on good terms, but Ash and Misty learned they got on like cats and dogs. Come on guys, we're wasting sunlight. Ash commented as he turned to face the exit. Due to the morning's adventures, it was late afternoon, it was clear they would camp out. Pikachu spoke up from Ash's shoulder. I'm ready. Pikachu shouted out. Serena was a little hesitant. She isn't a fan of camping out. She is fine with all the Pokemon, but what if it starts raining? or something attacks in the night, what will they do? Seeing the look on Serena's face, Ash gave her a reassuring smile. Don't worry Serena, we made a promise that we will face all our trials together. Me, Pikachu and Fennec and all have your back. Ash explained, with a sympathetic tone. He also offered his hand towards her. This was always his way of saying, trust me. We are in this together. Looking at the open gesture, Serena knows that she will be safe, no matter what happens. With that, she gladly accepted Ash's hand, causing her to blush, although Ash didn't notice it. Okay Ash, I'm ready to go. Serena replied in a sweet tone. With that the two trainers and Pikachu, started making their way into the forest. What to do? what to do what to do misty panicked she really didn't want to go into the creepy bug infested forest but they still owed her a bike ash and serena were almost out of sight g g g r r r wait for me misty took off after them the group has been walking through viridian forest for about an hour to ash's disappointment he hasn't seen a single Pokemon he could add to his team. He also discovered why Misty was so hesitant about entering the forest. Turns out, she has a fear of bugs. With the slightest movement, she lets out an ear-piercing screech. A-A-A-R-R-R-R-G-G-G-G. Misty screeched as a leaf fell from a tree. A couple of Pidgeys flew away from the loud noise. Hey! It could have been a one of those big scary bug types. Like a Caterpie. But it wasn't. Ash had since let go off Serena's hand. She was scared anymore and he didn't feel a need to do it. Much to Serena's disappointment. Although both ten-year-olds were tired of the loud noise. Hey. I think Misty just learned hyper voice. Ash whispered. Which caused Serena to giggle and Pikachu snicker and it was super effective. Pikachu added. That one hit Ash and he let out a loud laugh. What's so funny? Misty asked as she stormed over to the group. Nothing. Both Ash and Serena replied in unison, with a sweat drop. Rigget. Misty replied, clearly skeptical, but she is willing to let it go. This time. Well, I for one, say we take a break. Misty suggested, although the tone in her voice made it sound like a demand. My feet are killing me. With that, Misty took her bag off and dropped it on the floor, before she sat down with it. I say we run for it, Pikachu suggested, which caused Ash to lightly chuckle. I think we should take a break, Ash replied, if only to stop her screeches. Serena giggled and Pikachu sighed, but both agreed. With that, Pikachu jumped onto the floor, while Ash and Serena followed Misty's lead and sat down, 
taking their bags off. After another screech, Ash realized something, while Misty was around. He wouldn't catch any Pokemon in the forest. Then he grabbed his water container, to discover it was empty. That gave him a perfect idea. Hey guys, I'm out of water. I saw a stream little bit back, so I'm going to fill it up. Ash explained as he stood up. He looked at Pikachu and Serena, the former had found a nice branch to snooze on, while Serena was rubbing her foot. Guess they're staying put. Hey Ash, I'm out of water too, can you refill my container please? Serena asked as she handed over her water container. Sure Serena. Ash smiled as he took the pink container. Can you keep an eye on Pikachu, while I'm gone? Sure. Serena returned the smile. I think I'll brush Fennekin while we're here. Serena pulled out her Pokeball, and released her fire starter. Ash smiled as she also got out the brush, before setting off. Ash was walking around the forest, backtracking. Sure, he was sad Pikachu wasn't with him. He can't battle anyone he comes across, but at least he can get a breather from Misty. Until they entered the forest, she seemed okay, but now she is just annoying with all the screeches. Ash continued walking, closing in on the stream. He sat down and began filling the two containers. Help, help. Ash heard a scared voice shout out. He stood up, setting both containers down on the floor before looking around. Help, help. With that, Ash looked towards a tree to see a little bug stuck on a branch. Although the branch was breaking, Ash knew if he waited, then the branch would fall and the little bug would be squished. Ash, being Ash, jumped into action and climbed the tree. As he got to the branch, he reached out and gently grabbed the little bug. He placed it on his shoulder and climbed down again. During the whole event, the little bug was too scared to even move, and was on the verge of tears. Once back on solid ground, Ash held the bug in his and just rubbed its back, until it settled down. Hey there. Ash spoke as he placed the bug on the ground, and sat down next to it. I'm Ash. H. Hi. The little bug replied nervously. Um. T. Thank you you. For. S. Saving me. The little bug was so quiet, it was nearly inaudible. No problem. Ash shrugged the thanks off. He did appreciate it, but he didn't do it for thanks. After all, I couldn't just leave you, could I? This brought tears to the little bug's eyes. Hey, what's the matter? Ash asked concerned because he's crying. You're not hurt, are you? The little bug continued to let the tears fall, and tackled Ash in the stomach, but rather than hurting Ash, it barely hit him, and snuggled into his stomach, Ash had used his hand to support the little bug. It took a couple of minutes but the little bug finally stopped. Ash was about to say something, when the little bug's stomach rumbled. He he he, Guess you're hungry. Right. Ash asked as he walked over to his bag. The little bug was too nervous to answer. He already saved the little guy. He isn't going to feed him too, is he? The little bug's question was answered when he pulled out a can of Pokemon food. Ash opened it, and sprinkled a few pellets onto his hand. Walking back to the silent bug, who was just staring at him. Ash sat down, and offered the hand with the food. Go on. Eat up. Ash instructed. Hesitantly, the little bug, crawled up to Ash's hand, and looked at Ash one more time. Go on. I'm not gonna bite. Ash gave the little guy a reassuring smile, and the bug slowly ate one of the pellets. It didn't taste of much, probably because it is just plain Pokemon food but the little bug hasn't eaten in days, and even when he has, it's only a couple of leaves, at most, so he isn't complaining. After the first pellet was gone, 
The little bug picked up some speed and just got to work, eating even faster. Feeling the bug eating so fast, tickled Ash's hand, causing him to laugh. Ha 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 ha. Slow down buddy. Ash laughed. It isn't going anywhere. The little bug didn't stop until it was all gone. Before he could say his thanks, Ash had lifted him up to eye level. Thank you, Ash. The little bug nervously. Don't sweat it. Ash replied with his typical toothy grin. I know. Why don't you come with me? At Ash's suggestion, the little bug looked shocked. Many trainers have passed through here, but they passed him up, claiming he was too weak. But Ash, not only saved him, and feed him, but also wants him to join his team, he would be crazy to pass this up. In the past, he did have a few friends, but they all evolved and left for the mating season, sure probably make it there, as it goes on for a few months, but first he needs to evolve, and if anyone could get him to do that, it's Ash. But does he really want to be his trainer? A hey, are you sure? I I mean. The little bug replied, stuttering. Of course I'm sure. With how fast you ate that food, I bet you'll be a great partner. Ash cut him off. I would be crazy to not catch you. That again, brought tears to the little bug again, who again snuggled into Ash's chest. He he he, I guess that's a yes. Ash laughed as he brought out a spare pokeball and taped it against the sensor on his head. A red light engulfed the bug type and he was sucked into the pokeball, which immediately dinged, showing the little guy put up no resistance. With that, Ash pressed the button, and released his new capture. H hey, um Ash. The bug spoke. Yes buddy. Ash replied with a friendly smile. How can you understand me? The bug asked. I don't know how. But I can understand all Pokemon. Ash answered honestly. This shocked the little bug. He has only heard of people understanding Pokemon from legend. And he knows Ash did save him. But he couldn't really be. No. You don't mind if I scan you. Do ya? S scan. The bug asked. Scared. Don't worry. My Pokedex won't hurt you. Ash reassured. It only gives me some information on you. Oh okay. The bug nervously replied. Ash smiled and pulled out his Pokedex. Caterpie, the worm Pokemon. Its short feet are tipped with suction pads that enable it to tirelessly climb slopes and walls. When in danger, it will release a horrible stink for protection. Type. Bug. Ability. Shield Dust. Hidden Ability. Run away, note. Hidden ability is unlocked. Sex. Male. Nature. Quiet note. The nature can change when the Pokemon evolves. Moves. Tackle. String shot. Bug bite. Okay Caterpie. I've just got to finish getting water. Then we can head back and I'll introduce you to my friends. Ash explained. Caterpie nodded in understanding. Why don't you wait in your Pokeball, and we surprise them? Okay Ash. Caterpie replied, happy, he has always been a little shy, hence his quiet nature, but he has made a friend with Ash, and he said that Caterpie will meet more friends, this is enough to make the worm Pokemon happy. With that, Ash returned Caterpie to his Pokeball, and placed it on his belt. Ash went back to the containers, making sure both were filled he picked his stuff up and made his way back to the group, with a new friend in tow. While Ash was off, collecting water, Misty was sat, massaging her acing feet, while Serena sat, brushing Fennekin's fur, while Pikachu was snoozing. He was tired from the journey, as he spent his time on Ash's shoulder but he was resting his ears, which are throbbing in pain after Misty's assault on them. After a while of silence, Serena decided to speak before it gets awkward. Hey Misty. Serena spoke, breaking the silence. 
This caused the orange-haired girl to look at her. At the battle chateau, how come you didn't need a recommendation to get in? Misty sweat dropped. The truth is, everyone needs a recommendation, but there are exceptions, such as gym leaders, frontier bosses, and other important people, but Misty doesn't want to reveal that little secret, at least not yet. Oh, I it's because of, Misty nervously replied. Been to one before so they already know me. Serena wasn't convinced by that speedy explanation, but decided to leave it. After all it was none of her business, and she didn't want to start another argument. Okay. Serena replied in a sweet tone and with a warm smile, although that had the opposite effect on her, as Misty could hear doubt in Serena's tone. Misty decided to just shrug it off. After all, she doesn't want another argument either and she too tired to argue anyway. The silence resumed. After about a minute, Misty stood up. Serena. Misty spoke, causing the honey blonde girl to look at her. I'm going to do some training. Serena smiled and nodded, as Misty began to walk into a clearing with a pokeball in hand. Serena got thinking. After her horrible failure at the battle chateau, she should really start taking training seriously. Hey Misty. Serena shout out as she stood up. This caused the orange-haired girl to turn around. Mind if I join you? Misty smiled. Seems like Serena is taking her advice seriously. I don't mind. Misty replied. Come on. With that Misty continued her walk to the clearing and Serena followed with Fennekin, shortly behind. As Ash came back to the camp, he saw the bags on the side off the road with Pikachu resting on the branch above them. A few meteors away, he saw Misty and Serena in some intense training. Misty had her star you out, who was trying to form a sphere of water and fire it at the rock, working on the move water pulse. While Serena was throwing small rocks in the air and Fennekin was using them as a target for her ember, working on her accuracy. Ash smiled, and decided he should probably start training too. Hey Pikachu. Ash called up to his yellow partner. The mouse Pokemon looked down to his trainer. Come on down here, I have a friend for you to meet. Okay. Okay. Pikachu crankily replied. He was happy to make new friends, but not to be woken up. Keep your cap on. Ash sighed. Pikachu swiftly ran down the tree after some stretches and jumped onto Ash's shoulder. Ash picked up the bags, since Pikachu was look after them, and carried them over to the training ground off the main path. Hey guys. Ash shouted to the girls. I'm back. At the sound of his voice, both the trainers and Pokemon turned to face him. Hey Ash, we've just been training. Serena replied. Great. Ash smiled. I think I'll join ya. With that Ash set the bag down and approached them. I also have a friend I want you to meet. Ash added as he unclipped Caterpie's Pokeball and enlarged it. Both girls raised an eyebrow. Serena was a little sad that Ash caught his first Pokemon without her, but she also knows if the opportunity came up, then Ash would take it. Misty was a little excited to see what Pokemon Ash caught. Maybe a water type from the pond, or a flying type from nearby, or maybe even. Come on out and meet your new friends. Ash called as he pressed the button, releasing his new Pokemon. Caterpie. At the sound of his name, and the bug type appearing in front of them, Misty froze, why on earth would he want a BB bug? Ah, he is a cutie. Serena beamed as she got on her knees to pick the little bug up. Caterpie, this is Serena. Ash introduced. Serena, this is Caterpie. H-H hello. Caterpie stuttered, and Ash translated. Hello to you too Caterpie. Serena sent a warm smile, although she could tell he was nervous. I'm not going to bite. Don't worry Serena, 
Caterpie's a little shy. Ash reassured. What about me? Pikachu asked a little ticked he hasn't been introduced yet. Sorry buddy. Ash apologized. Caterpie, this is my other Pokemon, Pikachu. Pikachu, this is Caterpie. As the two Pokemon got to know each other, Misty was still frozen. Why did he catch that disgusting thing? Is slimy, creepy, and just plain horrible. Dot dot. What is wrong with him? After the two Pokemon introduced themselves, Caterpie discovered that everyone so far is pretty friend. The orange-haired girl is probably friendly too. With that, he jumped on the floor and crawled over to Misty. As he appeared in front of the oldest trainer, the little bug was not expecting her reaction. Ah! Misty screamed. Get away! Get away! Get away! As Misty lashed out, she, accidentally, kicked the little bug away. Ash was able to catch his new Pokemon before he hit the ground. Come on Misty. You aren't scared of an itty bitty Caterpie, are you? Ash teased as he placed Caterpie on his shoulder, and scratched under his chin, to which the little bug responded positively. Just keep that disgusting bug away from me. Misty shouted as she hid behind a tree. You could at least be happy for me, ya know. Ash commented with disgust and turned around. I just caught my first Pokemon, and all you're doing is scream. I'm happy you caught a Pokemon. Misty replied. But why did you catch a bug of all things? I can't stand bugs. Reali. Serena rolled her eyes. With all your screaming, I would never have guessed. Serena was being very sarcastic. Then Serena saw the little bug was in tears, what did he ever do to her? Don't listen to her Caterpie. Serena got to eye level with the little bug, and rubbed his head. I personally think you're adorable. Although Caterpie enjoyed the affectionate, he couldn't stop the tears, those things Misty called him, they stung. Lovely. Misty muttered as she rolled her eyes. Misty. What has Caterpie done to deserve this? This. Abuse. Question mark quote. Ash angrily asked. After being the punching bag of Gary and undermined by Drake for years, he knows the damage stuff like this can do, and he doesn't want anyone to go through it, much less his own Pokemon. Misty was angry. How dare he accuse her of Pokemon abuse? It's not her fault she has a fear of bugs. After the treatment she got from her sisters, why would she willingly inflict the same treatment on someone else? Why did he have to catch a bug of all things? Well, Serena asked, clearly annoyed and waiting for Misty's response. Misty's anger began to vanish. Maybe she was too hard on the little bug. After all, he never actually did anything to her. Of course she can't help her fear but she could try to be a little nicer to it. Besides, what's the worst that could happen? As they waited for Misty's response, both ten-year-olds the three Pokemon all grew annoyed. Misty tried to say something, but she couldn't find her voice. Come on guys, Ash stated after getting tired of waiting. We don't need insensitive bug haters on the team. Those words stung. Serena nodded and picked up Fennekin, followed by her bag, and got ready to leave. Hey Ash, can you put me back in my ball, please? Caterpie asked as he tried to stem the tears. Ash sighed, he knows it would be better if Caterpie stayed out, they could talk and make him feel better, but if Caterpie doesn't want to, then there is nothing they can do. Okay Caterpie. Ash replied with a sad smile. I'll cheek up on you later. With that, Ash returned his little bug, before clipping the ball back on his belt. He went over and picked up his bag, while Pikachu jumped onto Ash's shoulder. Ready to go? Ash asked, looking Serena, who smiled and nodded and with that, the group headed off. Hey, 
You can't leave me in this bug infested forest. What about my bike? Misty shouted as she ran after them. Serena rolled her eyes. Was she still going on about that bike? It has been about 40 minutes since the group went through their colorful debate, and they parted ways, even though Misty was still on their tail. When will she give it a rest? Serena moaned as she looked back to find the orange haired girl still behind them. I don't know. Ash replied then raised his voice a little so Misty could hear. And I don't really care. After all, she's only a bully. That stung. Misty has been bullied her whole life, by her sisters, and it feels horrible. Maybe she. No, she was too tough on Caterpie, and she needs to make things right. These kids may owe her a bike, but she could try to be a little nicer to them. Wait up. Misty shouted as she picked up the speed to catch up. Just keep walking. Ash mumbled and everyone just ignored Misty. Wait. Please. Misty pleaded one more time. Quote dot dot dot. Yes. Ash questioned with a sigh and turned to face her. I want to apologize. Misty stated. Not in her aggressive tone like before, but a genuine one. I still have my fear, but you was right. I was too hard on Caterpie, so. I'm sorry. Ash let the words sink in and was silent for almost a minute. I'm not the one who deserves the apology. Ash replied sharply. She may have sounded genuine, but there is only one way to know for sure. With that, Ash pulled out Caterpie's Pokeball. If you're truly sorry, then you can apologize to Caterpie's face. Ash pressed the button and released Caterpie, who had since calmed down. He looked at Ash, to see what he needed. When Caterpie saw Misty, he turned around with tears in his eyes. Ash kneeled down, and picked the little bug up. Come on Caterpie. Ash encouraged. Just hear Misty out. I think it will help. Caterpie looked at Ash. This boy saved him, feed him and took him in, he can definitely trust Ash, and if Ash thinks this will help, then it's got to be worth a try. With that, Caterpie took a deep breath and turned to face Misty. Ash picked him up, so he was eye level with Misty. Misty took a deep breath, she could do this, after all, he never did anything to hurt her, so she should be fine. Right. Misty sighed heavily. Caterpie. I want to apologize. I'm sorry for those things I said. It's just that I have a fear of bug, but I shouldn't have taken it out on you, so. I'm sorry. Misty apologized, full hearted. Caterpie went over Misty's words, it did actually make him feel better. If she was big enough to apologize, then he could be big enough to forgive and forget. After about a minute, Caterpie faced Misty once more. Apology accepted. Caterpie nodded, and Ash translated. Now I want you to seal it, with a rub on his head. Ash commented. Misty looked at him with a, what do you mean, look. Normal people make a deal with a handshake, and Caterpie is missing one vital thing to do that. A hand. So you can seal and put this way with a rub on the head. With Ash's explanation, Misty face darkened, it was one thing to apologize, but another to actually touch the bug. No, she could do this. Misty's face turned from scared to determined, she slow reached her hand out, and moved it towards the little bug. What seemed to be a year, but eventually Misty rubbed. Caterpie's head, back and forth. Caterpie gave a happy chirp as Misty gave him the rub. Both Ash and Serena smiled at the scene. See Misty, isn't it better when we get along? Serena smiled. Yeah. Misty sighed happily as she finished the rub. From there they realized it was getting late, with the orange sky. The group found another clearing and set up camp. After a little training session, they made themselves some tea of sandwiches and fruit. 
It was times like this that they wished they had a cook in the group, someone who could fix a nice hot meal. Serena did ask Grace to teach her once, but instantly regretted it when Grace claimed she only wanted to know to impress Ash, despite whether or not it was true, it was embarrassing. The Pokemon also wasn't too fond of the food they have, other than Caterpie, he is just happy to eat something that isn't dried leaves. Hey guys, Ash turned to Pikachu and Fennekin who didn't look too happy while eating the Pokemon food. What's wrong? Caterpie quickly replied with, nothing, and continued to eat, he really didn't mind the plain flavor, it tasted better than just starving or a couple of leaves, plus he's too shy to really speak out. Pikachu, sweat dropped, he knows Ash won't mind that he doesn't like the flavor, but he doesn't want to sound selfish either. Fennekin sighed, guess she'll have to speak up. The problem, Ashton, is that this food is plain, no flavor, comprehend a. Fennekin replied with sass. Ash sweat dropped, only his mother called him Ashton, and only when getting told off. Sorry guys, Ash apologized, it is all we have at the minute, but I promise when we get to Pewter City, we'll restock and let you chose the flavors. With Ash's friendly smile along with the explanation, Fennekin smiled. Very well. Fennekin replied, I'll hold you to that promise. She may have seen Ash's actions and know he is a kind and caring person, but she hasn't bonded with Ash like she has with Serena. With that, everyone returned to their tea. Once finished, the three trainers all stepped away to change into their bed wear and lay out their sleeping bags. Serena, very slyly lay hers next to Ash's and when questioned just stated, it was to scare of wild Pokemon in the night as a group is more likely to deter them, and Ash being as dense as he is, simply accepted it. It wasn't long before the three trainers were asleep, and unknowingly, Serena latched onto Ash's arm, snuggling up to Pokemon, however, stayed awake. Caterpie was sat on a tree stump, looking up to the moon. Pikachu jumped up and joined him. Hey Caterpie. Pikachu spoke. Why are you still up? Can't sleep. Caterpie answered as he stared at the moon. Too much on my mind. Like what? Pikachu asked. Oh. I've always been shy. That only got worse since my friends evolved and left to start their own families. I realized I couldn't evolve on my own, then I met Ash. Caterpie explained, never looking away from the moon. Yeah, Ash is a good guy. Pikachu replied, as he now stared at the moon. Before I met him, I didn't trust any human. Been hurt by too many of them. But, he was willing to sacrifice himself, to protect me. Hours after we met, and before that, I was horrible to him, shocking him, laughing at him, and yet, he only cared that I was safe. Wow. Caterpie replied, shocked. I knew he was special. He met me, when I was on a branch that was about to fall, he climbed the tree and saved me without a second's hesitation. The two Pokemon fell silent again and just stared at the moon. Ya yeah, no. Caterpie spoke again. I never really considered being a trainer's Pokemon. I've only wanted to evolve, but after my friends left, I realized that isn't likely to happen. Don't worry Caterpie. Pikachu reassured. Ash will help you to evolve. I know he will. And then you can find a girlfriend and fly off together. Fennekin butted in as she jumped onto the stump. Caterpie blushed. Maybe, maybe not. Pikachu commented seeing the blush. Speaking of girlfriends and stuff. Caterpie replied as he turned towards Ash and Serena asleep. Are they? No, they're not together. Pikachu replied. Not because of a lack of trying on Serena's part. Fennekin added. He he he. Yeah, Ash is kind of dense. Pikachu nervously laughed as he scratched behind his ear. 
With that, the three Pokemon bid each other a good night. Fennekin curled up on Serena's stomach. Caterpie crawled into Ash's sleeping bag and fell asleep him. Pikachu lay down on Ash's chest and slept in a ball shape, and everyone slept through the night. The next morning, Serena woke up first, and discovered she cuddled up to Ash in the night. Despite being ecstatic she got to spend a night like that, she quickly let go and stepped away to change, to avoid any embarrassment. Ash woke up to the sun shining in his eyes when he did, both his Pokemon woke up with him. Ash did some stretches before Pikachu jumped on his shoulder and went to his bag to fish out some fresh clothes. Caterpie went on a crawl to stretch his suction pads when a a a s s s s h h h h Caterpie cried h h h e e e l l l p p p Ash and Pikachu looked up to see a big bird Pokemon chasing Caterpie around. Normally, Ash would scan the new Pokemon with his Pokédex, but right now Caterpie is in trouble. Caterpie. Return. Ash shouted as he held up Caterpie's Pokéball. The red light engulfed Caterpie and returned him to safety. May not be the best plan, but it worked. The bird, Pidgeotto, was not amused that her breakfast was taken away. She turned to face Ash and Pikachu and got into a battle stance. A tough one. Ash smirked. Pikachu, you up for a battle? You bet. Pikachu cheered as he jumped off Ash's shoulder and got into a battle position. Last time he refused to battle a Pidgey and that almost result in all their deaths, he isn't going to make the same mistake twice. Ash vs Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto shot straight into the air, now her opponent was in the field. She cried around Pikachu, like a predictor watching her prey. Pikachu, use Thunder Shock. Ash instructed, he has the type advantage. Pikachu got ready and fired a bolt of electricity towards Pidgeotto, but she easily dodged. Pidgeotto entered a dive bomb and shot straight down. Pikachu, try Thunder Shock again. Ash instructed, the closer she gets, the likelier it is to hit. Pikachu stood his ground and aimed another bolt of electricity. Pidgeotto continued downwards and redirect an inch above the ground. The electricity came flying at her, but rather than dodging, Pidgeotto slammed her wing into the ground and flung a heap of sand at Pikachu, which nullified the electricity. Pikachu, dodge with quick attack. Ash panicked. Pikachu followed Ash's instruction and quickly ran away from the sand attack. Pidgeotto smirked, it would show that mouse a true quick attack. Pidgeotto shot off like a bullet and flew alongside Pikachu. What could Ash do? Thunder Shock would do a lot of damage, but it keeps missing and Pikachu can't run away forever. That's when he got an idea. Pikachu, jump on Pidgeotto's back. Ash shouted. Pikachu smirked. Before the bird Pokemon could react, Pikachu leapt from the ground and latched onto Pidgeotto's back. Ash smiled. His plan would work. Thunder shock. Ash shouted. Full power. Pikachu smirked. This is going to be fun. With a loud battle cry, Pikachu unleashed a large electric attack direct onto Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto cried out in pain before crash landing. Pikachu jumped off, a little winded, but not injured. Ash had Pidgeotto right where he wanted her. Pokeball. Go. Ash shouted as he threw a spare Pokeball. It soared through the air and hit the bird Pokemon, she was sucked into the device. The ball shook back and forth multiple times. Come on. Come on. Ash desperately thought. After a few minutes, the ball stopped wiggling, and dinged, showing it was a successful capture. All right. Ash cheered as he ran and picked up his new Pokeball. I just caught, a Pidgeotto. Ash struck a pose, holding the Pokeball out in one hand and flashing a V sign with the other. 
Pikachu jumped up, mimicking his B signs. Another one bites the dust. Pikachu joked as he struck his pose, along with Ash. With the battle over, Ash went to his bag and pulled out his Pokédex and scanned the Pokéball. Pidgeotto, the bird Pokémon. The evolved form of Pidgey. This Pokémon is full of vitality. It constantly flies around its large territory in search of prey. Type. Normal, flying. Ability. Keen eye. Hidden ability. Big pecs, note. Hidden ability is locked. Sex. Female. Nature. Lonely, note. The nature can change when this Pokemon evolves. Moves. Tackle. Quick attack. Gust. Wing attack. Sand attack, agility, steel wing. Wow Ash, that was a great battle. Serena commented as she ran up behind him. Yeah Ash, that wasn't half bad. Misty added, who had also changed out of her bed wear. Geez guys, you're embarrassing me. Ash blushed as he nervously laughed and scratched the back of his head. With that, Ash got ready to introduce Pidgeotto to everyone. Ash held out the Pokeball and took a deep breath. He pressed the button and released Pidgeotto. The female bird Pokemon was breathing heavily with electricity still going throughout her body. She was paralysis. Ash saw this and frowned. Sure he was in a battle, but that didn't make him feel better. With that, he got out his medical kit and approached his new Pokemon. Silently he brought out a paralyzed heel and sprayed her. Pidgeotto was shocked. She tried to eat his Pokemon, now he's healing her. Ash put the paralyzed heel back in the kit, and took out a super potion and sprayed her. Why was he doing this? What did she do to deserve this nice treatment? There you go Pidgeotto. Ash spoke, with a friendly smile. Feeling better? Yes. Thank you. Pidgeotto replied, shyly. You're welcome. Ash smiled. I'm Ash, and this is my partner Pikachu. Hiya. Pikachu chimed in from Ash's shoulder. Good day. Pidgeotto replied with her own smile. Then her stomach rumbled. Sorry. Don't sweat it. Ash smiled. But, I was going to eat your Pokemon and. Pidgeotto hastily replied. And. You were hungry. It's only natural that you'd look for food. But from now on, I'm your trainer, so if you get hungry, just tell me. Ash cut her off, before pulling out a bowl from his bag and filled it with Pokemon food. Pidgeotto was shocked, but accepted it. This kid is actually really nice. After she tried to eat one of his Pokemon, he healed her and feed her without being asked, or complaining. Enjoy, Ash told her, and Pidgeotto dug in. I think I better get changed. With that, Ash released Caterpie. Pidgeotto apologized for trying to eat him. Ash poured out two more bowls of food for Caterpie and Pikachu, and all his Pokemon dug in. With them all eating, Ash grabbed his travel clothes and stepped away to change. Once Ash came back, he noticed the girls also feed their Pokemon, as well as themselves. To save time, Ash decided to just snack on some fruit while on the journey, and it wasn't long before all they were set off on their travels. It was a couple more hours, while traveling, the trainers just chatted. But stopped when they heard some voices. U R G. Are you sure we're going the right way, Jesse? A male voice moaned. The trio stopped. It couldn't be them again, not so soon. Of course I know the way, James. A female voice aggressively retorted. I just wanted to see the sights. Meuth. Just admit it. We're lost. A third voice butted in. Hey, there's some people. Maybe they can give us directions. The male voice excited informed. The trio sweat dropped and tried to hide. They didn't want to deal with these guys again. Thank Arceus we found you here. 
James spoke as he approached the trio. We were wounding if you kind people would happen to know. James stopped when he saw who the people were. I mean, James corrected himself, as Jesse and Meowth caught up. Of course we found you here. The trio then got ready for their motto. Prepare for trouble. Jesse spoke. Make it double. James spoke. To protect the world from devastation. Jesse added. To unite all people within our nation. James added. To denounce the evils from truth and love. Jesse striked a dramatic pose. To extend our reach to the stars above. James striked a dramatic pose. Jesse. James. Team Rocket blasts off at the speed of light. Jesse made one final pose. Surrender now, or prepare to fight. James made one final pose. Meowth. That's right. Meowth chimed in at the end. The group sweat dropped. Did they do that every time? If you're lost. Serena spoke up. The exit is over there. We're not lost. Jesse angrily snapped. We here to take your Pokemon, for interrupting our mission back at Viridian's Pokemon Center. Go Ekans. Go coughing. Misty grabbed a Pokeball, ready to battle. Not this time, Twerpet. Jesse shouted as he threw a net which caught Misty, trapping her. All right, Pikachu. Ash turned to his mouse Pokemon, but was cut off. Not this time, Sludge attack. James cut him off. Coughing unleashed a blob of toxic sludge which hit Pikachu's eyes effectively blinding him. Okay. I can't use Pikachu. And Pidgeotto is too tired. That means Caterpie is my only option. Ash thought as he gripped his Pokeball. Ash isn't so naive to think he can easily beat two Pokemon with Caterpie at once, especially when they both have a type advantage. He turned to Serena, who was looking scared. Serena, will you battle with me? Ash asked. A are you sure? A Ash. Serena stuttered. I'm sure Serena, we can't just let these guys take our Pokemon. Ash replied. Remember, don't give up until it's over. With the mention of their motto, Serena turned from scared to determined. They beat them once before, they can do it again. Serena also gripped her Pokeball. Fennekin, burn it up. Serena shouted, releasing her fire fox. Caterpie, I choose you. Ash shouted as he released his little bug. Team Rocket, burst into laughter at the sight of the bug type. Ha 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 ha, do you really think that little bug can touch us? Jesse laughed. That measly bug won't make a difference. James laughed. It's not even worth battling. Meowth added. Ash and Serena vs Team Rocket. We'll see about that. Ash retorted. No one makes fun of his Pokemon. Caterpie. String shot on coughing. Caterpie ignored Team Rocket's comments and unleashed a string shot at coughing. The string wrapped around the poison gas Pokemon. Now pull it into a tackle. Ash continued. Caterpie pulled coughing toward him, then launched at the Pokemon, with a tackle attack. The impact, due to double momentum, caused more damage to coughing who went flying, crying in pain. The cry of pain caused Team Rocket's laughter to stop. Well, if you insist. Jesse growled. Ekans, go and get your dinner. The snake Pokemon, leapt towards the little bug. Fennekin. Ember in the mouth. Serena shouted. Fennekin took aim and unleashed a barrage of fireballs into Ekans mouth. The snake Pokemon was brought to stop, then promptly ran around like a headless torchic, trying to put his mouth out. GGGRRR. Coughing. Tackle that measly bug. James growled. Show him who's stronger. Coughing flung itself with much more force. Ash knows Caterpie won't win a battle of power this time. Jump Caterpie. Ash panicked. It was the first thing that came to mind. 
Caterpie jumped and was directly above coughing as the poison type lost all his momentum. That gave Ash an idea. Now Caterpie, tackle straight down. Ash instructed. Caterpie used all his force and shot straight down, hitting coughing to the ground, causing more damage, and staying on it. Now bug bite. Caterpie, had two fang form and he bit down hard on coughing, who again cried out in pain. Ekans, dig and get that stupid fox. Jesse shouted, James could deal with the bug and she would go after the twerpet. Ekans dived into the ground, out of sight. Fenekin, be careful, Serena warned. It could come out, anywhere. As Caterpie continued his bug bite attack, and not letting up, while James had floods of tears stream down his face, he was getting beaten by a bug. Fenekin nervously looked around waiting for Ekans to appear. Suddenly, the snake Pokemon sprang up under Fenekin, knocking the fire fox onto the ground. Wrap it, Ekans. Jesse instructed. Ekans, didn't waste a second and wrapped itself around Fenekin. Don't let go and use poison sting. Ekans face its prey and opened its mouth, unleashing a load of poisonous needles from its mouth direct at Fenekin. Fenekin cried out in pain. Coughing fell on the floor and rolled in front of James with swirls in its eyes. Caterpie had knocked it out, and still stood strong. Ash looked at Fenekin, who was trapped. Caterpie. String shot Ekans' mouth. Ash instructed. Caterpie turned to the target who was completely ignoring the bug. Caterpie fired another string shot and it completely covered Ekans mouth. Thanks Ash. Serena thanked, with a grateful smile. No problem. Ash returned the smile. Should we finish this battle? Fenekin, get out of there with a scratch attack. Serena smiled. Fenekin's claws extend, and then lashed out. The pain from the scratch as well as panicking from the string shot, caused Ekans to loosen its grip, allowing Fenekin to escape. Before either Ash or Serena could call out another move, Fenekin began to heat up, before bursting into flames, then tackling Ekans at a much faster speed. She learned flame charge. Ekans went flying and landed in front of Jesse, the flames burnt the string shot, and Ekans had swirls in its eyes. Now you need to deal with me, O-W-T-H. Meowth declared as he extended his claws. Have a taste of my fury swipes. Meowth lunged forward toward the two Pokemon, with his claws ready to attack. String shot. Ash shouted. Caterpie unleashed one last string shot, and completely covered Meowth. Now send him back with tackle. Caterpie zoomed forward and tackled the immobile Meowth directly in the stomach, which sent him back to the rest of Team Rocket. During the battle, Misty was able to wiggle out of the net. Now all three trainers stood their ground, both Caterpie and Fenekin were ready to attack, while Misty gripped her own Pokeball. Team Rocket sweat dropped, they have no Pokemon no weapons, and are exhausted from their previous encounter, there is only one suitable action to take. Run. With that, they returned Ekans and coughing, before picking up Meowth and running away. Team Rockets blasting off, again. They shouted as they ran off. After watching Team Rocket run away, everyone turned back to the Pokemon, when Caterpie blew white. After a few seconds, Caterpie was gone and a new Pokemon took his place. Ash pulled out his Pokédex, and scanned it. Metapod, the cocoon Pokemon. The evolved form of Caterpie. It has encased its body in a hard shell. This specimen reached this stage faster than any previously discovered Pokemon of this variety. Type. Bug. Ability. Shed skin. Hidden ability. Note. There is no hidden ability for this species. Sex. Male. Nature. Quiet note. The nature can change when the Pokemon evolves. 
moves, tackle, string shot, bug bite, harden, iron defense, asterisk moves are currently locked. Well done Cater. I mean Metapod. Ash congratulated as he made his way over to him. You're one step closer to being a Butterfree. Ash picked his newly evolved Pokemon up and hugged him. Metapod was silent. He spent months training by himself, but he was too shy to even try to battle. He spends one day with Ash, and he saves his life, and helps him evolve, he owes Ash so much. What's up Metapod? Not up to talking. Ash asked. Although Metapod had tears in his eyes, he owes Ash so much, and he buried his head in Ash's chest. Don't cry Metapod. You were awesome. We all were. Yeah, you two aren't bad. Misty commented as she approached. If you remember to keep a cool head, especially when your Pokemon are in danger, you will make pretty good trainers. With everything over, they decided to continue their travels before they waste the whole day. Ash cleaned Pikachu's face. He took his now normal spot on Ash's shoulder. He sprayed a potion on Metapod and cheeked on Pidgeotto, and both were battle ready. Although, Fennekin was another story, an antidote was used to heal her poison she sustained from the multiple poison stings, and Serena used a couple of potions. Fennekin was still tired, and needed a rest, it would be a while before she could battle again. With that, they set off. After a while, Ash's stomach rumbled again, like Serena said, it was an alarm clock to meal time. With that, they found a clearing, and sat down for lunch. Again, it was the plain Pokemon food, and just simple sandwiches for the trainers. Once they finished, they decided to do some training. Ash used his Pokédex to learn Pikachu could learn Iron Tail, and that would be handy against a rock-type gym, like in Pewter City. With that, he got Pidgeotto to teach Metapod and Pikachu to use their Steel-type energy, which she can do with Steel Wing. Metapod used this information and quickly learned the move Iron Defense. Pikachu was having a harder time as his tail hasn't been trained very much, so before he could learn Iron Tail, he needed to strength it. Serena cheeked up on Fennekin, who was still a little winded and not up for a battle. Serena took out the brush, instead of training this time, she gave Fennekin a brush. Misty, let out Staryu, and they practiced unlocking Water Pulse, and are getting close to doing this. Whilst they were training, a little orange bug wandered into the clearing. It saw Pidgeotto, practicing exceeding and descending without losing speed. The little bug was fine about leaving her be, until she got too close for comfort. The orange bug fired a poison sting out of fear. Pidgeotto took the attack, and turned around, angry, she didn't like sneak attacks. Pidgeotto didn't bother warning anyone, she could handle this pipsqueak on her own. She flapped her wings, creating a powerful gust and sending the little bug flying. It landed near Serena. Pidgeotto. Ash shouted. Pidgeotto stopped. She couldn't go lone wolf anymore. She has a team. She has a trainer. Pidgeotto gently landed near Ash, and looked at the ground. S sorry Ash. Pidgeotto apologized. Just tell me why. Ash asked. That little bug hit me with a poison sting. Pidgeotto replied. If he wanted a battle, I was more than happy to comply. Ash sighed. Weedle didn't look too aggressive type. He probably only attacked out of fear. From there, Ash went and talked to Pidgeotto about work together and then left her in her ball to think things through. She wanted to work with Ash, if he could catch her, then he was a decent battler, but she just isn't used to working with people, she has always been a loner. Meanwhile, Serena picked the little Weedle up and healed him. She had a gentle touch and was really nice to the little bug. His parents just kicked him out. 
After a few weeks after a weedle's hatched, they are made to leave their parents to learn how to battle, as part of their maturity. This little bug had just left his parents, sure he was supposed to go by himself, but maybe he should stay with this girl. He's never been too ambitious, and she seems really nice. Serena stood up from a tree stump she was sat on, and placed Weedle on the seat, while she went through her bag. A spare pokeball rolled onto the stump and Weedle looked at it. He couldn't just ask, could he? No, she's busy at the minute, might as well just get it done with. Weedle crawled forward and poked his stinger against the button. He was sucked in, and it immediately dinged to show he had no resistance. Serena came out of her bag holding her water container. She looked around and couldn't see the little bug. Hey where did Weedle go? Serena asked, to no one in particular. Fennekin barked to get Serena's attention, then pointed towards the Pokeball. Serena picked up the Pokeball and pressed the button releasing Weedle. Weedle. Serena questioned. Did you hit the Pokeball yourself? Weedle nodded in response. All right then. Serena shrugged. I've caught a Weedle. From there she brought out her Pokedex, while the others approached. Ash had returned Metapod, and Misty did the same with Staryu. Weedle, the hairy bug Pokemon. Often found in forests, eating leaves. It has a sharp venomous stinger on its head. Type. Bug. Ability. Shield Dust. Hidden Ability. Run Away. Note. Hidden Ability is Locked. Sex. Male. Nature. Docile. Note. The nature can change when the Pokemon evolves. Moves. Poison Sting. String Shot. Congrats Serena. Ash spoke. You've caught your first Pokemon. Serena blushed at Ash praise. He he he. Thank you. Ash. Serena thanked in a sweet tone. No prob. Ash was cut off. He why 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 a a a a a a h h h h. A boy with a samurai sword leapt out of a brush, cutting Ash off, and the sword was an inch from Serena's face. Greetings, young maid. The boy was cut off, by Ash tackling him to the ground. Who are you? Ash shouted. And why was you pointing that sword at Serena? Don't even think about hurting her. Serena blushed as she felt a rush of affection. Ash was protecting her, like a knight in shining armor. I'm not a thief. I just wanted to battle. The boy struggled with Ash on top of him. Then why do you have a sword? Ash asked, in a lower voice. Err, it's to make a good entrance. The boy struggled. Um Ash, I think you can get off him. I don't think he's a threat. Serena interrupted, as much as she liked the fact that Ash protected her, it was a little far, if he just wanted a battle. Okay, Ash replied. He gave one last glare at the boy, although he was thinking along the same line. As he stood up he, accidentally, stood on the sword, snapping it in two, just to be safe. This annoyed the boy, but he knew if he complained, Ash was more physically able than himself, so he would beat him in battle, then complain. As I was saying, are you trainers from Pallet Town? The boy asked. Yeah, I'm Ash Ketchum, and I'm going to win the Indigo League. This is Serena Yvonne, and she is going to conquer the Battle Chateau. Ash replied, introducing both himself and Serena. Very well. My name is Samurai, and I challenge you to a battle. Samurai replied, pointing his finger at Ash. I accept. How about a two-on-two -two battle? Ash replied with confidence. Samurai was a little nervous, he only has two Pokemon, but he can't turn it down and look like a coward to this kid that put him down, plus that Gary kid said that it was Ash who he would easily beat, so maybe he could battle both trainers from Pallet. Fine by me, Samurai replied, with confidence. 
Um Samurai, why does it matter if we're from Pallet Town or not? Serena asked, cutting into the atmosphere between the two trainers. I've already battled two trainers from Pallet. Their Squirtle and Bulbasaur were amazing, and I was informed of the others. I knew I just had to battle the Pallet crew. Samurai replied. Oh, so you've already met Gary and Leaf. Serena replied. That was indeed their names. Fantastic trainers in their own right. Samurai replied. Hey, we haven't talked to any of them since we left Pallet. We should call them when we get to Pewter City. Serena suggested, turning to Ash. Yeah, well Leaf anyway. Drake is probably still on the road, and Gary will just be, Ash replied, and before continuing, putting on his Gary face. Hey Ashy boy, I'm the greatest in the universe, I've already caught every Pokemon and won a billion badges. Ash continued in his best Gary voice. Yeah, Serena laughed. Pikachu knew the Gary kid wasn't nice, as shown in his lab encounter, but as far as the history between Pikachu's trainer and this Gary kid, it clearly goes a lot deeper. Misty and Samurai both sweat dropped at this, they clearly don't get the joke. Um, can we get the battle started? Samurai asked, as Serena's laughs calmed down. Sure thing. Ash replied throwing his fist in the air, and taken place on a makeshift battlefield. Samurai went to the other end. Ash gripped, Metapod's Pokeball. He couldn't use Pidgeotto, she needed to calm down after the Weedle incident. Pikachu could battle, and it is a two-on-two, -two, but Metapod has just as much right, and the more he battles, the sooner he'll evolve. Samurai had also gripped him own Pokeball. Both trainers took the positions and threw their Pokeball. Two Metapod appeared ready to battle. Ash vs Samurai P. I. I'm sure I'll win Ash. Metapod told his trainer. Since his latest victories and unlocking iron defense in training, Metapod has had a confidence boost. Great Metapod, just make sure to do your best. Ash replied with a thumbs up. Ha, my Metapod was freshly caught this morning, he will harden past the point of damage. Samurai arrogantly laughed, convinced he had victory. Wait, you caught it as a Metapod? Serena asked. Yes, is that a problem? Samurai asked, annoyed. Serena's sweat dropped, along with Ash, his Metapod, Pikachu and Misty. No, no reason. Serena replied, even she knows Wild Metapod only knows Harden and can't cause damage, unlike Ashes who still knows his moves from when he was a Caterpie. Fine then, you can have the first attack. Samurai arrogantly told Ash, still convinced. Metapod, Harden. Ash shouted, he figured he could humor Samurai for a bit. Metapod Harden. Samurai replied, Max out your defenses Metapod, Iron Defense. Ash shouted, and his Metapod seemed to turn silver, then his normal body seemed shiny. Ash knew he had this battle in the bag, so maxing out his defenses will help with the second Pokemon. I Iron Defense. Samurai panicked, he thought Ash's Metapod was like his. Yeah, I raised my Metapod from a Caterpie so he knows all types of moves. Ash replied with a smirk. Samurai started to panic. Okay Ash, my defense won't go any higher. Metapod informed his trainer. Okay Metapod, no attack with a tackle, then go into bug bite. Ash instructed. Metapod charged forward at the opposing Metapod, slamming it into a nearby tree, then whilst on top of it, unleashed a powerful bug bite. Samurai fell on his knees at this, with streams of tears coming down his face. How could this happen? Samurai mumbled to himself. After a while, Samurai's Metapod had swirls in its eyes. Okay Metapod, you've won this battle, get of the other Metapod. 
Ash instructed and Metapod bounced over to the battlefield again. Samurai returned his Metapod. Hey Ash, I have that wired feeling again. Metapod told his trainer, before glowing white. Hey Ash, is that? Serena asked, as she got her Pokédex ready. Yeah, Metapod's evolving. Ash replied, as he took out his Pokédex. The glowing stopped and in Metapod's place was a Butterfree. Congrats buddy, you're finally a Butterfree. Pikachu shouted, as the newly evolved Butterfree took to the air for the first time. Yeah Butterfree, congratulations, how do you feel about continuing this for your first battle as a Butterfree? Ash asked, as Butterfree stopped in front of Ash. Great, I owe this all to you Ash and I promise I will stay by your side. Thank you, Butterfree replied. You don't need to thank me Butterfree, you did all the hard work. Ash replied with a thumbs up. Um, is Ash talking to his Butterfree? Samurai asked, as he held his second Pokeball. Yeah, we don't know how, but Ash can talk to Pokemon. Serena replied, as Butterfree took his position on the battlefield. Samurai was speechless, he believed what Gary told him, but he now knows he will have a harder fight on his hands. First, it's two against one, and Butterfree has all those state boost from the previous battle. Ash and Serena scanned the new Butterfree. Butterfree, the butterfly Pokemon. The final evolved form of Caterpie. In battle, it flaps its wings at high speed to release highly toxic dust into the air. Type. Bug, flying. Ability. Compound eyes. Hidden ability. Tinted lens, note. Hidden ability is unlocked. Sex. Male. Nature. Haste, note. The nature is unlikely to change as it's a fully evolved form. Moves. Tackle. String shot. Bug Bite, Iron Defense, Stun Spore, Poison Powder, Sleep Powder, Confusion, Gust Note, Harden was forgotten within evolution. Hey Butterfree, it's great you're not that shy anymore. Ash commented as he saw the nature had changed. Yeah, I actually feel a lot more energy, and I guess evolution on top of the confidence boost from winning was enough to overcome it. Butterfree happily replied, Yeah, and we will keep on getting stronger, together. Ash replied, throwing his fist in the air, mimicked by Pikachu and Butterfree. Serena couldn't help but giggle at the scene, to her, Ash's determination is one of his best traits. If you're done, I have a battle to win. Samurai arrogantly declared, despite his disadvantage, he is still confident. Ready when you are, Ash declared, as Butterfree returned to the battle position. Pinsir, crush them, Samurai shouted as he threw his Pokeball. A Pinsir appear with an intimidating glare, although neither Ash or Butterfree showed signs of fear. Ash and Serena used their Pokedexes. Pinsir, the stag beetle Pokemon. If it fails to crush the victim in its pincers, it will swing it around and toss it hard. Ash vs Samurai P. 2. Oh great another bug Pokemon. Misty sarcastically muttered, either everyone ignored her, or they didn't hear her. Hey Butterfree, despite your defense boosts, we still need to be careful of those horns. Ash shouted and Butterfree nodded. Pinsir. Finish this with one shot, vice grip. Samurai shouted. Before Butterfree or Ash could respond, Pinsir grabbed Butterfree in his horns, causing some damage despite the defense boosts. Ash panicked until he noticed how close Pinsir was. Butterfree, stop struggling and use poison powder. Ash calmly instructed, he figured by struggling it was causing more damage. Butterfree heard Ash's directions, and stopped trying to break free, Samurai attempted to have Pinsir let go and dodge, but it was too close. As he let go, 
Butterfree released a purple powder and covered Pinsir in it. Oh no! Samurai cried, as he saw his star battler poisoned. Now knock it away with gust. Ash followed up. Butterfree began flapping his wings, unleashing a powerful wind, blowing the stag beetle back into the ground, causing it to cry in pain. Pinsir, you're stronger than this, fight back with Rock Tomb. Samurai shouted. Pinsir stood up and plowed his horns into the ground, flinging a giant rock at Butterfree. Once finished, Pinsir fell onto one knee, suffering from the poison. Butterfree was struck by the rock Pinsir flung at him and was knocked further into the sky. Pinsir, repeat and use rock tomb. Samurai replied, and Pinsir used rock tomb again. Butterfree, stop it with confusion, and return to sender. Ash replied. Butterfree regained control of his flight, due to his higher attitude, he had more time to react. His eyes glue blue and a light blue wave appeared around the rock tomb, stopping it just before it hit the butterfly Pokemon. Butterfree then released another wave of confusion and hurled the rock back at Pinsir. Quick Pinsir! Dodge! Samurai shouted in fear. But due to the poison damage, he was into much pain to move. The rock collided with Pinsir and a cloud of dust appeared. Once it settled, the rock was smashed and Pinsir was weakly standing. All right, Pinsir, now try your. Samurai cheered but was cut off when Pinsir once again took poison damage and fell backwards with swirls in his eyes. Pinsir, no. Samurai shouted as he ran over to his fallen stag beetle. All right, Butterfree, you won your first battle after you evolved. Ash shouted, as his bug Pokemon flew down to him, where Pikachu joined in with the celebrations. Serena soon came over to join them. Congratulations, Ash, that was awesome. Serena cheered. Thanks, Serena, but it was all down to Butterfree that we won. Ash replied with a thumbs up. Serena loved it. Such high spirits and he was giving all the credit to Butterfree. He was selfless and she loved it. You know, Butterfree is really cute. I wouldn't mind raising one myself. Serena commented. Butterfree was really happy with that compliment. Well first we should find a Caterpie for you to catch. Ash replied, with a toothy grin. Alas. You was able to best me in battle, Ash of Pallet Town. Samurai replied as he approached the celebrating group. Thanks for the awesome battle Samurai, it's thanks to your battle that Butterfree evolved. Ash extended his hand. Thank you, but compared to you, I, am but a novice. Samurai replied. Don't put yourself down like that. Your pincer was really strong. If Butterfree didn't get all those defense boosts I'm not sure he would have survived that rock tomb. Ash replied. With that both trainers shook hands. Thank you Ash. I shall stay and train here. Then, one day we should do battle again. Samurai replied, as they broke the handshake. Right, and I'll keep training and when this battle arrives, I'll win again. Ash replied with a confident smirk. Well, I should be off. Best of luck on your travels. Samurai replied, with that he bowed and walked off. Ash also returned Butterfree and thanked it for a great battle, then the group continued their journey through Viridian Forest. Family Reunion Night Time The trio are stood on top of a hill looking over a dimly light up city, Pewter City. It has been about two weeks since the group had their encounter with Samurai. In that time, they spent each day the same. After breakfast they'd travel until noon, there they would stop for a quick lunch then spend the afternoon training. Their training sessions have been very successful. For Ash, Pidgeotto has opened up a little and is by far his most experienced Pokemon as she has spent years training by herself and prided herself on being the best bird in the forest. 
Butterfree is no longer the shy little bug he was when he was a little caterpie. Pikachu has almost mastered Iron Tail and has become like Ash's brother in everything but blood. Serena's training session was also very successful. Fennekin has become quite the battler and is gaining some serious fire power. Weedle has done some occasional training, although he isn't the most enthusiastic Pokemon, although he has created a strong ish bond with Serena. Misty's training session has also been very successful. Her Staryu has mastered the move Water Pulse, and when they found a body of water, she would also train Goldeen who is working on unlocking her hidden ability, Lightning Rod. We're finally here, Pewter City, Ash happily declared, and our first gym battle. Great, Pikachu cheered from his shoulder, as he sparked his cheeks. Serena, you are G, can't you just rest for five minutes? Misty moaned in an annoyed tone. Guys, calm down. Serena stepped between them. She was tired as well, and was just playing peacemaker. Look, here's some rocks, let's rest here. The group walked over to several large rocks. They were surprisingly smooth, and they each took a seat. I can't wait to sleep in a nice a warm bed. Misty commented with her eyes closed. Ash's stomach growled. And I can't wait to eat something other than sandwiches. Ash replied as he closed his eyes. Is food the only thing on your mind, Ash Ketchum? Misty asked with a deadpan expression. That, and Pokemon battles. Serena thought with an inward giggle. It's not my fault, Ash moaned. My stomach and I was on rocky ground since he hasn't had anything but sandwiches in weeks. Serena giggled again. Sure it sounded silly but that was just how her ash is, and she finds is cute. Serena blushed. Did she just think of ash, as her ash? When did she start doing that? Sure, she has dibs and will personally escort any girl who tries to take him to the ore region, but when did she think of him as hers? Well, they have been getting closer ever since traveling together, spending all day, every day together, eating, traveling, training together. As weird as it was at first, Serena likes the sound of it, her ash. She realized she was bright red and while lost in her thoughts, Ash and Misty were just staring at her. Misty was smirking, knowing Serena is having another ash and to see, while Ash looked with confusion and concern. Hey Serena, you all right? Ash asked concern evident in his voice. Your face is all red. Do you have a fever? Ash stood in front of her and placed the back of his hand against her forehead. The blush just intensified her blush, but it changed from one about her crush to one of pure embarrassment. Air um. I'm fine Ash. Serena replied in a panicked tone. Ash shrugged his shoulders and accepted it sitting back down on one of the rocks. Anyway Ash, do you think you're ready for your gym battle? Yeah, Pikachu, Butterfree and Pidgeotto have all been training really hard, we can definitely win that badge. Ash replied with enthusiasm. You betcha, Pikachu added with equally enthusiasm, in the few weeks these two have been together, they have grown quite close. Serena smiled. She loved how Ash could easily connect with any Pokemon. Looking at them now, it's hard to believe it's the same Pikachu that shocked Ash when they first met. I wouldn't get too confident if I was you, Ash. Misty butted in. I heard Pewter's gym specializes in rock types. None of your three Pokemon stand a good chance based on type. Type match isn't everything, Misty. Ash retorted. How dare she put his team down like that? All I'm saying is, if you ask me really nice then I might let you borrow some of my water Pokemon. Misty replied with annoyance. Thanks, but no thanks. Ash replied, he saw Misty harden a glare and decided it's best to explain. 
Sorry Misty but if I use your Pokemon, then it wouldn't be my badge. Pikachu, Butterfree, Pidgeotto and I have all been training hard and using your star you wouldn't only undermine all our hard work, but also would make it at least half your badge. I believe in all my Pokemon, and our strength. I do appreciate the other, but I just wouldn't sit right. Misty nodded in understanding. That's a great mind set Ash. So who are you going to use? Misty asked. What do you mean? Ash asked clearly confused. A gym battle isn't like a normal battle. You are only allowed to use a set number of Pokemon. Misty explained. I believe your battle will be a two on two, as it is for your first badge. Hum. If someone needs to sit out. Ash tapped his figure on his chin, deep in thought. There isn't any of his team with a type advantage, so no easy first choice. Butterfree has been really hard working since evolving and been almost as enthusiastic about the gym battle as Ash. Pidgeotto has been a complete powerhouse, any battle she's been in she has won with complete obedience and efficiency, and in training, she has helped out both Pikachu and Butterfree. She taught Pikachu to master Iron Tail, and she helped Butterfree unlock Iron Defense, and been helping him with his flight maneuvers. Then there's Pikachu, he is Ash's starter, and best buddy, plus he's worked so hard on Iron Tail, it's not fair to leave any of them out. Pikachu saw his trainer's confliction and decided to add his own thoughts. Ash, I'll sit out. Ash looked at Pikachu with surprise. Pikachu, are you sure? Ash asked. Yeah, my best attack won't do anything to them, at least the others have evolution, and all their moves will at least do something. Pikachu reasoned. Okay Pikachu, if you're sure. Ash replied as he scratched behind his ear. But I promise you'll be up next time. I'll hold you to that. Pikachu smirked. Then the two fist bumped. That settles it. Tomorrow, me Butterfree and Pidgeotto will take on the Pewter City's gym leader. Ash announced. You'll do great Ash. Serena smiled. And I'll cheer you on all the way. Thanks Serena. With you cheering, there's no way I can lose. Ash smiled with a thumbs up. Serena blushed. So, you're challenging Brock, are you? A new voice spoke. A man appeared behind Ash, almost out of nowhere. He was sat, Indian style on a larger rock behind the group. Had he heard them the whole time? Well, he was silent and without looking up, is out of sight, so it's no surprise he went unnoticed. Um, why yeah, why? Ash nervously replied, he didn't know why, but this guy was giving him bad vibes. Looking at both Serena and Misty, they seemed to be thinking the same. No reason. The man replied. I just know Brock's really strong. I don't think you stand a chance. How would you know? Serena butted in. How dare he put her ash down like that? Just trust me. My name's Flint, by the way. The man replied as he jumped down from the rock. And these are my rocks you're on by the way. Your rocks? Misty questioned. Yes, I run a rock selling service. Flint replied. With the looks he was getting from the three trainers, he sweat dropped. A man has to make a living somehow. Rig it. Ash stretched out. Anyway, I don't care how strong Brock is, me and my Pokemon have been training really hard. I came here for a boulder badge, and that's what I'm leaving with. Serena smiled and blushed. She loves Ash's determination. Humph. If this is how you feel, then I guess I could show you the way. Flint offered. Ash smiled and was about to accept, but Flint continued. But the gym is closed now, so I can show you the way to the Pokemon Center now, then to the gym tomorrow. Ash shrugged his shoulders. Okay. Let's go. Ash stood up and Pikachu jumped on his shoulder. The two girls stood up too, 
Serena moved behind Ash. She didn't trust this man. And it gave her an excuse to be closer to Ash. Misty didn't need any protection. He tries anything, and she will happily introduce her mallet to his face. By the way, that'll be a five poke dollars each, for resting on my rocks. Flint explained, as he held out his hand. The trainers and Pikachu sweat dropped, but handed the money over. With that, they all set off. When they arrived at the Pokemon Center, they bid goodnight to Flint, who left back towards the hill. The group ate their first proper meal in weeks. Ash ate five portions. Afterwards, they got a room and after changing into their night wear, fell into a long sleep. It felt good to have a bed rather than the ground. The next morning, the group woke up, got ready and ate breakfast. They learned that the gym was opened at 11 a.m., so Ash decided to spend the morning for a little more training. Serena and Misty stayed inside and chatted, while he did that. Once outside he went onto the battlefield and let out of Butterfree and Pidgeotto, Pikachu also jumped down and joined them. Okay guys, the gym battle is today. Ash spoke and the three cheered. But it's a two-on-two, -two, meaning one of you will need to sit out. Both of the flying type looked concerned. And Pikachu has volunteered to sit out, so I'm counting on you too, Butterfree and Pidgeotto. Ash finished. Butterfree happily zoomed around happily while Pidgeotto let out a small smile and nodded. Are cool a Pidgeotto. A new voice spoke from behind Ash. Ash turned around to find a boy, a couple years older than Ash. He has a planned dark red cap, black eyes, a blue jacket with with white lining, navy gray trousers, and black trainers. The boy had his Pokédex out, scanning Pidgeotto. Um sorry, but you are. Ash nervously asked, he didn't mind this boy checking out his Pokemon with his Pokédex, but it would be nice if he was introduced first. The boy fell over with embarrassment. He he he, sorry about that. The boy nervously laughed. My name's Calum Zadiver from Aquacord Town. Ash looked, confused. Aquacord Town? Ash questioned. Never heard of it. Ash shrugged his shoulders and Calum smiled. I'm not surprised, it's from the Kalos region. Calum explained. Ash smiled explaining his confusion. Ash wondered if Serena and Calum know each other, they are both from Kalos after all. Then again, Ash doesn't know every single person from Kanto, so they probably don't. So Calum, are you here for a gym battle? Ash asked, excited about maybe getting a new rival. Already had it. Calum smirked as he pulled out his badge case. There were three badges in it. One was a pink heart shape, one is a multicolored circle and the final one is a gray rough-edged rock circle. Oh wow, you've already got three badges. Ash awed in amazement. Yeah, I've been in Kanto for a couple of months now. Calum smiled. I'm actually heading to Pallet Town next. Really? That's where I'm from. Ash smiled then he realized he never actually introduced himself. Sorry. I'm Ash Ketchum. Nice to meet ya. Calum replied. How about you? Got any badges? No. I'm going for my first badge today. Ash replied. And these are the Pokemon you're using? Calum asked. Ash thought Calum was putting them down, and frowned. Seeing Ash's frown, Calum's sweat dropped and decided to explain. I didn't mean anything bad, honest. It's just that none of these Pokemon have the best matchup. Type matchup isn't everything. Ash retorted. We've been training really hard, and we will win it together. Pikachu, Butterfree and Pidgeotto all cheered behind Ash. Calum smiled. It was like looking in a mirror. I know. My first badge was against a bug type leader and my grass starter didn't have the best matchup either. Calum explained. 
It was a tough battle, but we pulled through in the end. So why did you come to Kanto? Ash asked. Well I competed in the Kalos League a couple of years ago, but lost in the top 64. Kalem explained. I then was struggling about what to do next and just helped out the professor who gave started my journey. Then I learned the Indigo League was starting staring again, and was reminded of family in Kanto, so I decided to give another league a chance, but doing it from scratch with only my starter. Cool. Ash replied with a smile. Actually one of my friends I'm traveling with is from Kalos. Why don't you come and meet them? Are you sure? Kalem asked. Yeah. Then you can watch my gym battle. Ash excitedly replied. That is, if you want to. Kalem smiled. I'd love to watch your battle. Kalem replied. But why? You're an experienced trainer right? Ash smiled. And Kalem nodded in response. So it would be great if you could watch it. Any give me any pointers? Sure. I know in the past stuff like that has helped me, so I'd be happy to do the same. Kalem replied. Great. Ash cheered. Butterfree. Pidgeotto. Return. I'll get you checked out before our battle. Ash returned his two flying types and Pikachu jumped on Ash's shoulder. Ready to go. Ash asked. As he faced Kalem. Yeah. But isn't Pikachu going in his Pokeball? Kalem asked. No. Pikachu made it very clear he doesn't like his Pokeball. So he just hangs out on my shoulder. Ash smiled. Right buddy. Ash turned to face Pikachu. Right Ash. Pikachu replied, and the two high-fived, before turning around and walking into the Pokemon Center. Kalem smiled at the interaction between Pokemon and Trainer. It was clear they both care for each other very much, if only he was like that when starting out, he might have actually stood a chance at the Kalos League. The two trainers and Pikachu walked up to the desk where Nurse Joy is stationed. Nurse Joy, can you check over my Pokemon before our gym battle please? Ash requested. Since he met her last night, he wasn't surprised she is so similar to the Nurse Joy from Viridian City. I'd be happy to. Nurse Joy happily replied. Ash placed his two Pokeballs in the tray she presented and Pikachu jumped down next to them. Nurse Joy dinged the bell and a chancy came and took them away for the examination. The checkup shouldn't take very long. Nurse Joy informed them. I'll bring them over once it's done. Okay. Thank you Nurse Joy. Ash happily replied before looking around and spotting his two traveling companions sat in a booth. The two boys made their way over. Ash lead the way with Kalem following shortly behind. Hey Ash. Misty greeted the raven-haired boy. They approached from behind hind the side Serena was sat on, so she didn't immediately spot them. That was a short training session. Ash quickly frowned at Misty's teasing. Yeah well, I didn't want to wear them out before the gym battle, so they are having a quick checkup. Ash explained. By the way, this is Kalem. Kalem this is Misty and Esser. Ash was cut off. Hey cuss, long time no see. Kalem cut Ash off, as Serena turned to face the boy behind Ash. It was her cousin from Kalos. Ash and Kalem had sat down in the booth. Ash sat next to Serena and Kalem sat next to Misty. After some explaining, and general chatting, Nurse Joy brought Ash's Pokemon over. In that time, Kalem and Serena caught up on old time, Misty seemed very interested to get to know Kalem better, and Ash and Kalem talked about different Pokemon. They even went outside where they each introduced all the Pokemon. Kalem's current team is Chesnot, Drodrio, Ninetales, Starmie, Eevee, Voltorb. They continued this chat until Flint showed up. With that, they all set off towards the gym. Hey Flint, do you know anything about the gym leader? 
Ash asked. Other than he specializes in rock types. Yeah. His name is Brock, and really strong. Flint praised. But he doesn't want to actually be a gym leader. How come? Serena asked with intrigue. Flint sighed. His good-for-nothing father, he left his family to become a trainer. Brock's mother left soon after, leaving Brock to look after his nine siblings and run the family gym. Flint explained. He doesn't even like battling. He would rather be a Pokemon breeder. That's horrible. Misty declared. Yeah. Calum agreed as he looked down. I kind of feel bad about battling him, yesterday. Everyone also looked down. Flint saw this and sweat dropped. Don't worry. Brock is a good sport, and he would want you to take this battle seriously. Flint added, and Ash nodded in understanding. Although deep down, he is hurting. Ash nodded in understanding, while Calum looked perplexed. Hey Flint, how do you know so much anyway? Calum asked and the rest of the group looked towards Flint, wanting answers. Flint. Sweat dropped. Um. I heard. Stories. Flint nervously replied. The group nodded. Although skeptical they decided they could accept that answer. After all it's none of their business. The group continued their walk for another five minutes, before they appeared in front of a building. Here it is. Flint announced. Pewter City Gym. Right. Misty replied with a sweat drop. At least we know he takes his type seriously. Serena added, also with a sweat drop. The group waited about a minute, unable to come up with words to describe the building design. Well let's not just stand around. Ash spoke up. There's a gym badge in there, waiting for me. With that, the raven-haired boy marched up to the front door. He is ready for his gym battle. To be continued. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys like this video. If you do then like and share this video with your friends, and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also make sure to press the bell icon to get the notification for my new videos. And remember the author's name is Heracross0122, so please go and check out his fanfics page. Now then, goodbye for now, see you guys on my next video.